Yeah. yeah. Oh, I. this is like, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to because I was in the car and I thought of it. It was funny. But we should call this episode Two Hawks and One Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here we go. And I'm not Tony Hall. Hey everybody, it's Jason Ellison, Tony Hawk, Hawk vs. Wolf, greatest podcast of all time in the history of the universe. What what he said about our podcast, uh, and we have decks that are of the podcast. Signed by the greatest skateboarder Sign. of all time in the history of the universe and me. Two decks go side by side, signed by each of us right there. Black with silver. I love this board so much. Tim Baring art on both of these. Shout out to Tim and get yourself one of these bad boys. Black and silver, dip tick, available now. Get one today. Uh, you can get it at TonyHawk.com and in the shop right there. There's a little menu, upper right, shop, see both of these. Click add to cart, and we hope you give it to someone that has liked and described already. Yeah. Make sure you do that if you haven't. Thank you. Hey, Jason. Tony Hawk. Riley Hawk's here. Two yeah. Hawks versus one wolf. Oh, that's not cool. And he does jujitsu. Yeah, so but you'd have, you got to get me to the ground before it's going to start working. I'll switch both yeah. of you biscuit chins <laughs> off real quick. Jason would definitely kill me in a real fight. He sure. does. He he oh, kept, that's right. You guys. You no, guys. he came to me with, with like, because he saw me. Did, tell me the truth. You asked for boxing. You were like, hey, do you know somebody good Muay Thai? Because you see me slip a punch from uh, Volkanovsky. <laughs> and you were like, are you really? Wait, you did? No, I've never seen You that. didn't see that? No. Well, then there goes that whole theory. That but theory. <laughs> yeah, Volkanovsky, like one of the greatest MMA fighters in the world alive, pound for pound. S Set a rough go. Slipped the yeah, before that. Yeah. But he threw jabs and I slipped him. And I was like, fast as you want. And he's like, really? I'm like, fast, fast, go for it. What's up, bitch, bitch? The kid got me a couple of times, but I slipped. <laughs> I slipped more than one of those punches. And That's he was good. like, check him out. And I was like, hey, you don't know me. A lot of people But don't you've know always me. focused more on boxing, right? Than, yeah. yeah. You have like longer legs and i know that that's good for jujitsu mm -hmm. but it's also just well, like wait, you, wait, you guys you guys met up at, at your gym no, no he I hit me up saying. about getting better hands and feet and i was like you're ask if you ask me it means you know i know yeah you know and if you're that good at jujitsu it means you you don't just call bums for good hands you call <laughs> no. somebody who knows and he knew i knew that was my theory anyway yeah. i didn't see that video but now i want to see it I'll show it to you. Yeah, after got it saved. I knew the, it was going to be about favorites. you somehow. I posted it on my Instagram, dude. Yeah. Yeah. We get Riley here, and I knew it, it was going to turn, of course. Yeah. But it's going to turn about... It, yeah, it has I'm, to. I'm yeah. going to turn it into a story about me? <laughs> Absolutely. Damn right. What the hell am I here for? Yeah. <laughs> that is a good story. Right? It is. Yeah. Like, Because if you know fighting... Yeah, he knows. Well, and that's a guy that's... You. He's really fast, too. Like, he's known for being really fast. And I was like... Yeah, right. Yeah, I would think so. It was so. just like we were talking earlier about your backside smith grind, which is funny because you both have it where you can do backside smith grind on vert real easy. And I've always... I'm a smith grind guru. I love frontside smith grind. It's super easy for me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will toot my own horn. But when it comes to backside smith grind, I'm real bad at it. Like one of the worst I've ever seen. And then you told me that you think a backside smith feels safer than a 50-50. And that... Yeah. On certain coping, at least, for me. That's and on a, this ramp, whenever I backside 50, I feel like I'm just... I don't know. I'm just floating. I don't feel like I'm ever locked in or, like... You're not doing in it control. Speed. No, it's like... No, as it's soon as like, yeah. It's like survival. I'm like... Yeah. I feel like I'm, like, launching up to landing on a 50-50 and just hoping for the yeah, best. Yeah, because you can stay in, too, so... I get, I, and and you can just let it drop. Yeah, yeah I can't. I don't know. I think I just think from being doing it on ledges, and it feels more like a ledge on vert to me than a rail. That makes sense. I wish yeah. I could say that. No, you, we both <laughs> cannot. <laughs> <laughs> but a ledge, I I kind of get it, but I just can't. I feel like I get too far back on them because I don't want to get caught and fall forward. Yeah. And I never am in the right spot. I'm always too far back. Yeah. I mean, when I do it, it's like, 
maybe a six inches <laughs> at most. It's not like on I'm, vert. Yeah, it's not like I'm just sitting on it like a Jimmy or someone who just they just grind like the whole. Let me ask you this because I thing. remember when you were a little kid and you skated in huck jams and stuff when you had all your pads on and you were a little kid and you could like do this. We would do the step up together and you did more tricks than I did up the step up, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you were so little. But I never really saw you ride vert until you were like an adult. Did you yeah. ride vert ramps when you were a little kid, or was it just because you yeah, seem more of I a think street I guy? Just grew, I think I would just skate more like honestly more bowls. I feel like right, like at parks, which is kind of the equivalent of like nowadays vert type skating. I it guess was, it was but. also just sort of <laughs> more a product of his environment too. Yeah, he was with me a lot at vert demos and yeah. bowl demos, and then he just would put his pads on and start skating, and so he got used to that style. And right, he he'd, he also street skated too, but at some point he realized that I mean, you can. But you just always had more of a. To me, it looked like you had more of a natural ability to skate parks than a vert ramp. Yeah, yeah, I think just because I just spend more time there, or I don't, yeah, I don't know. I guess, I, but a lot of I think a lot of kids back then were really good at both. Like they grew up at the Y. Like it was, there, it's like it was the, always it was like the Sheckler like, era. Yeah, like. Like Taylor Smith was way almost better on vert than he was on street for a long time, mm -hmm. and then he kind of just started going more street. But but, but did you did you ever do it. vert tricks? Like your your fundamental you can do like backside airs and yeah. frontside airs. Yeah, you can do backside airs and frontside airs. Yeah, because you can skate pools good, right? Uh, like okay, I mean, not I'm not ripping them, but I can carve around. Right, but you do you do like ledge stuff in a pool more than you would do like you're not going to do a hand plan in a pool no i'd rather do like a backside tail slide or something like that right which is see that's the like a backside tail slide in a pool is crazy for yeah, me except yeah that's just off limits <laughs> right like, just, yeah no, i'm like it's like, not happening yeah you would rather <laughs> I think that's, that. I would, yeah. i'd rather like <laughs> dodge a bullet like that's crazy i think that's like the park mentality because it's like yeah i feel like you see a lot more of that nowadays in those park contests yeah like, crazy long Nose grinds and backsmiths and tail slides and stuff. Which is forever impressive to me. Everybody that does those frontside nose grinds on concrete, I don't care who it is. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. And, 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 and like I've been to the last X Games where there was like a huge group of the girls that were doing stand up frontside nose grinds. Yeah. A couple of them around the corner. It's like a like, standard now, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's not, to me, that's not standard. That's all out yeah i've i don't think i've ever really gotten unlucky on one of those on transition but i've definitely done it on like bank to rail type spots where you flip your heel and you're just full you just like Back folding flip. chair backwards yeah your head yeah not cool yeah that one sucks but i've never i don't i feel like i always get away somehow on transition with it like if i don't get in i somehow can i don't know get out of it but because you've got you've got park legs yeah, I it's kind of so. like it's kind of like. <laughs> well, he know like he he knew how to knee slide from an early age, right? Too. It's you have you have a park you have a like it, it, to me it's the easiest way to explain it is if I do something incorrectly on the street course, I'm yeah. gonna go down so hard. Yeah, like getting out of it is like a trick in itself. I'll never forget Rick McCrank going down a double kink and he missed it and he ran down the rail and I was like. That, I'd put that in my video part if I yeah. did that. Like, I couldn't believe he could run down it so easily. Yeah, I've gotten away with some ones when I watch back. I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't believe I didn't Yeah, but you have get also wrecked. had the worst-case scenarios on those as well. Yeah, nowadays you see a lot of the dudes that skate those kink rails, they'll get, they're so low, they'll just, if they miss, they just kind of like, it's almost like rollerblading where they, like, slide onto their butt and then they just, like, grab the rail. I don't know, it's crazy if you watch, like, process of people doing those crazy curved kink rails now they they get away with it somehow just every time so you think that people have got better at getting at, for out of sure yeah like the, the technique is like way way more advanced now to skate like those crazy it's not just ollie and hope for the best which would allow you to try more stuff if you can get out like because yeah. i feel like if you're gonna if you do it wrong and you take a giant slam it's kind of the day's over yeah i mean even if i skate one of those kink rails i don't just go for it first try i kind of like try to ollie and touch it and run down the other side or run down the stairs. I don't want to just so frightening. right 
running down the other side. But you see a lot of that's how a lot of people do it. Can you now. Imagine how worried his parents are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That does that does trigger me because I've had I've watched my brother race Supercross and yeah. I've I, I'm a dangerous motocross rider. Yeah, I'm but I'm safe. I don't feel that nervous when I'm out there, and I should be nervous. Yeah, but watching him, I was terrified. Yeah, because it's my blood, and this is a dangerous sport. Totally. How, I mean, obviously, your dad. So, uh, well, I, it's more that when Riley takes big falls, I'm, I'm generally not there. We're not out, you know, in the you streets just together. The, you get the call. I get the call, and it's always, it's, it's just concerning and frightening. I'm not going to tell him to quit, but it absolutely is like, oh. But it's I mean, it's not, I think that it, when you get to a certain point, you know someone's capabilities, so you understand that sure, they I, know what they're getting into. I will say that. Do something. Like, Riley was my first child, and when I saw him developing his skill levels and also his sort of challenges that he'd set forth for himself, mm-hmm. he had a good handle on his own not limitations, but mortality. Not biting off too much. Yeah, but he would, but he would push. But he always wanted to push it. Yeah. And then, with having many other children, they all had, like, it all swayed in the other directions. So some were like too crazy for their skill level. Yeah. Some were too. They were too conservative for how good they were. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Riley had like the, the perfect balance of it. Um, but it was really interesting seeing. The others come out. I definitely like, I know what I think I can do and what I couldn't do. I don't, I feel like, but with confidence, you know, your skill level to where, you know, yeah, it's going to be scary and you're going to have to really put it on the line, but you know that you're, you're able to do it when it, like your brain will go into, you know, autopilot and you'll do it. Right. So I understand this. Yeah. How do you feel with your dad skating? Like I, get, I feel like I get scared just watching vert skaters in general because it's not my my field, I guess you could say. But I, I just, I don't know. It just seems like it's just more frightening to me for some reason. I Does don't know. he? But skate? even even when you were younger, I mean, you you know, you were on the Huck Jam too when you were ten years old. Yeah, I just mean it. Just it it's just more like extreme to me than watching my friend try to you know do a ledge line. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but there is times when my friends are trying really scary stuff that I'm scared to watch kind yeah. of but I feel like watching my dad now I know he knows whatever runs he's doing he's got got right. lock and if something happens and that's just you know luck of the draw like yeah. that that stuff kind of just happens you know Was there ever an era where you were worried for him? Um I think it's the same thing I knew that he knew his abilities and he knew that he was capable of doing something so right. If it was going to happen, it was going to happen, and you might slam, but, you know, that's, like, just what we all do. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp as well. It's a show. It's a podcast. It's sponsored by BetterHelp. I don't think you need to sound so angry. I might log on real quick before I do the rest of this read, because Tony Hawk is starting to piss me off. He seems a little edgy, and I think you would benefit from BetterHelp before doing these reads. Thank you. For better help. No, no, seriously. Thank you, Tony Hall. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. A lot of us spend our lives <laughs> wishing we had more time. <laughs> it's fair. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? To better yourself. Yes. The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and to make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you and so you can do more of it. Yeah, your brain's like an engine, Tony. And you've got to tune that bad boy up so that it works top notch like mine. That's why I'm such an incredible skateboarder. Don't give up, Tony. One day you'll get there. Uh, yeah, I, I use better help. I got issues. This cat's out of the bag, I guess. So yeah, I, I talk to a therapist. If you don't talk to a therapist, I grew up where you're not supposed to talk to her because it means you're like weak or something. Those people are dumb. And you need to talk to a therapist. It helps. It makes you a happier person. It makes you, uh, your loved ones like you more. It's true. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make more time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash HawkWolf today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash 
Hawk walk. Has there ever been a time where you're going to skate something that is dangerous and you tell him that you're going there and have you ever gone, okay, we'll no. have fun? No. no, no the, really. the opposite of that happened on the loop. Where he... Because we were talking about it and we were going to set it up. Yeah. I think it was the next day, right? Yeah, I just was going to... I was just coming. I just was going to watch. Right. Yeah, but I just and saw was, it and, and it was, I was He was like, like oh yeah, I'll go check it out. And, and I was not setting forth like, you should probably try it. Probably I didn't just, think I was going to try it and either, then, And honestly. then he just looked at it, he's like, I think I could do that. And then put his pads on and started getting around in the pads. How were you when he started to get in the loop? Uh, I felt, I felt I, like I said, I, I trust his I trust his sense of limitations and his, his sense of, of um, what he's capable of. Yeah. And then I, as I saw him going around, were you there? Uh-uh. Because he, he just had it. I thought I had it. You know yeah. when you said people had it. Yeah. I had thought like it. So it. I was like, oh, he's got it. And then a few things happened where uh, other people were so trying fast. it. was so fast. From trying it to no pads was probably 30 minutes. Yeah. Like, Wait, you did it with no pads? No, like with them taking the oh, pads the away. Oh, the pads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was like this live event thing, and I was like, But there was this delay right. because other people wanted the pads in, and he was ready for it out. So he had to wait, and because he waited, he yeah. screwed up his timing. Yep. So then he came around and just fell into the... Fl- I mean, he I got around. away pretty clean for, like, a slam, yeah. though. Like, I did, yeah. like, probably the best-case scenario slam where you're just leaning too far forward. Yeah. And I'm definitely... Which is kind of what pretty hard. does. But yeah, I did. The first time, right? The, I mean, when I'm, almost everyone Because I was just time. like, I'm not going backwards. Like, I'm not letting that happen. Right. So I was just more shoulder I forward. did the shoulder block, then I did the whip out. And then I knew, because I the, thank goodness my buddy was still working enough to like get back yeah. up there. I was like, I can't do that again, for sure. Yeah. But I definitely know what it's like to lean a little t- too forward and a little too back, because I yeah. did both of them back to back. So I was like, do the one in the middle. Are you regular? Yeah. I feel like I would have liked to do it that way. It's way better Over, going back side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I had to design. It's scary. It I just felt to... scary for some reason. Like looking over your yeah, blind I don't. shoulder. Yeah, front side sucks. You know what I mean? Yeah, because if you start to look over, it's the same as I when I try to do backflip on a snowboard. I can't like because when I do the loop, if you look forward and you don't do this or this, yeah. you're gonna be okay. Yeah. When I do a backflip on a snowboard, as soon as I get into a backflip, I feel like I should be doing a rodeo, and I should and I start tilting my chin over this way yeah and i start getting off axis with it yeah like the it's loop more, it's more that neck thing because if, you, if you're going front side you've got to like keep looking this way so yeah i don't yeah, know you that a little thing is like the scariest i get anxiety still just thinking about the trying it that day <laughs> like did you get hurt i mean i jacked my elbows pretty bad from just body slamming but i didn't it wasn't like i got hurt hurt right. but i just i don't know just that First one when they took the pads away and I was oh, yeah. like, oh my god, I don't, I'll never try it again. It was the scariest thing I've ever tried. By yeah, far. the pads being moved out of the way is like, Chicken it's like real. I'm it gonna do a so 540, <laughs> yeah. but I'm but if it goes wrong, I'm not bailing. You know what I mean? Like if we're in a, when I'm trying to do yeah. something that I know is dangerous, and I'm like, if it's real bad, I'll kick out. Like but the mega you, ramp felt like nothing compared to the loop to me. Like really, the scariness factor, yeah. Really? Because it just, I don't know. I just i just knew I was going to fly over it no matter what. Okay, yeah. But the loop, I was like, and right before me, I forget who it was, someone went around Green. and went right back into the Knocked his tooth to out. the up part of the side and like with his face. And I was like, oh my God. That's what? why that why yeah. that's why there was a delay. Because we, t- we were looking after him. So like he went around and went right back into yeah, the... Oh! The part yeah, it was brutal. How do you do that? Well, better than that than flying out the edge. Okay, I, yeah. That's one way to look at it, I guess. <laughs> well, that's what Tom. Shot I think it, it was like the kind of like skydiving thing where you almost like you don't want to know you're gonna do it for too long. You just want to show up and do yeah. it. That was kind of I was like, yeah. I just that was my advice for people in the mega ramp. Whenever they get on the roll in and stay there too long, it was John Schulte's, and he yeah. had already done a catastrophizing attempt a few months before, and then he was back up there with all of us. And we, I went, came back up, went, and he's still up there. And I said, "Hey, man, just so, this is like dropping in on Verve for the first time. Yep. If you're gonna do it, do it. But if you put your tail over and then pull it back up 
and then go back oh, over there and do it's it. Done, it's yeah. going to throw you off. Like you're going to scare yourself into not thinking of all the, th- cause it's yeah. like, it's the same as anything, man. If you, cause I think all three of us have it when the pressure's on, yeah. We can be nervous, for sure. But my body's still going to do what my brain tells it to do. Yeah. Like I think, uh, what's the the girl the the worst mega ramp gap slam Lizzie. ever? Yeah, you could tell that slam. She stopped thinking about where she was or yeah. any. She, she blanked out, out there, yeah. from the fear. Like she missed the kicker. Yeah, I was talking to or Pedro Delfino was telling me whenever he skates like a gnarly rail or something he'll set like a 20 minute timer on his phone and he's like if i'm not close by the time that thing goes off i'm not like i'm not mentally in it so i'm not doing it smart because i get it like if you're just you know tiptoeing around a rail for too long you you kind of let it you get in your own head you get in your you get in the way of yourself yeah, totally. Yeah, because then you have the jello legs, and you're you don't even know what's. You going You start on. thinking about stuff that has nothing to do with how you're going to do this. <laughs> For sure, yeah. No, it's, like Schultes did the same. He did the same backflip again. Oh wow! Like uh, as yeah, soon as he got to the that. kicker, he that video. he leaned yeah. back, at, the video. and I was like, <gasps> yeah. But it worked out again, where he perfect he back. made a perfect backflip <laughs> yeah. and landed back on his knees. So it was like kind of okay, but did I you also. See, I know you like you were talking about your brother doing motocross stuff, but you see today that Hayden Deegan slammed on that. Yeah, just now it was like he went off this jump all sideways and bailed his bike. It's probably like 50, 60 foot triple and just perfectly landed on his butt and slid down. I think he's okay. Yeah, I mean, he'll probably race, but it was pretty. It's it crazy scary. to know that he won last weekend and then that happens this yeah. weekend. It's like you're the best dude on the track. And then, well, dude, you're like Austin Forkner last weekend too. That was that was that hurt. This one kid, he just can't catch a break. He that was, slammed really bad. It was one of those ones where it's like I was genuinely bummed out after that happened. You could you, you couldn't do it again. Like it was just the wor- like he caught his back wheel on the on the in the rhythm section before the next jump, and the bike bucked and leaned to the side as he hit the next jump. Uh, it was so like his the bike is already of, like going through the channel. And just back flipping and landing on your head and back in the channel, pretty much. Like he was, he was going fast and far, and it was really sad. To and see, he but. went off and landed on the on the like on the wooden boards off the track on on concrete. Like, on, was it the concrete? Yeah, it was the concrete. Oh God. Yeah. Is he okay? I saw a video he put on <coughs> the internet saying he broke a couple things in his back and his shoulder, but for just that happening, it was pretty wow. Yeah, he got lucky. Yeah, motos. One of Riley's first words words was motorcycle. <laughs> I didn't even know that, but wait, what? Was one one of, of the first things he ever said: motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely something I've been missing since I hurt my shoulder is not being able to go. But you I was were going always. A lot. I mean, it used to be like there'd be to the point where you'd be in the car seat, and you'd just hear the rumbling next to the car. Yeah. Couldn't see it, right? And just. He'd look at me like a motorcycle. Yeah, motor. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got that bug too, dude. Yeah. I was but going to the track. The gecko, you I was going to, to the track him. a lot recently. Yeah. yeah you ride my shoulder. Still? Yeah, but like before I hurt my shoulder snowboarding, I was going like two, three times a week to Fox with some homies that all ride. And yeah. I was getting comfy. Like I could lap the pro track and I was feeling good. And then, but I knew too, it was like the snowboard. One of them was going to get me sooner or later. Yeah. I was getting a little too comfy on both. Yep. So snowboarding was probably the better option of the two to, to take me down. Agreed. And he he uh, separated his shoulder snowboarding. Yeah, in December. But it's pretty much better now. It's like right on the, the edge of being better. But you, yeah. I, <laughs> I separated my shoulder in 2008 or 2009 skating. And then Keegan separated his shoulder. We're all goofy footed. Yeah, but you, I cannot believe that you skated demos like three days after doing it because right. I could barely. Even Mine get out wasn't of bed. as bad as yours. Oh, okay. but it's still. I, mean, still, I, mean, I know. They didn't even, still, they didn't even say surgery. surgery was an was, oh, for I me. see. Okay, but I was telling you that because Keegan, um, one of his younger brothers, uh, separated his shoulder last year snowboarding. Yeah, and then Keegan just doesn't like his aesthetically. Cause yeah. like a dr- mine drops it right drops. Yeah, it's it got drops a bird po- perch on it. He heard Riley got surgery. He said, "What? I want to have surgery." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when Riley fixed his. Yeah. I feel like moto dudes. If it's like to me, boxers that have straight noses. Like if I'm gonna fight a guy and his nose is straight, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna beat his ass. Yeah. Because I'm like, you haven't been here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if it's like moto guys that if you're if you have a crooked shoulder, you you've ridden. 
<laughs> yeah. Wow. That's 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 how oh, I. That's a strange. That's the one thing I have. To, I know I have to kind of stay away from for a bit because when you. F- you don't slam too much motoing, but when you do, it's a good one. But the yeah. little ones are always you're just rolling right to your shoulder, pretty yeah. much like high siding in a turn or something. You're That's, always just right to the shoulder. So I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta wait that one out. Man, I high sided in Kawasaki, like uh, were giving me bikes, and then I they the team listened to my serious show, so they were like fans. That's funny, and they were hooking me up. Like my bike was awesome. Yeah, I way see too. Steve good for Caballero me. has like that. Hook he up took too, it off right? me. <laughs> Whatever, good for him. But he I, rips I went and they had my bike all tricked up and ready. Like at one point, I had the the race, the forks where you can lock down the front end so yeah. it's low to for yeah. the start. And I had my my buddy had like the Kawasaki umbrella like standing next to me. Like I look like Chad Reed. Like it was way <laughs> Wait, were you, beyond. Were you racing or it was yeah. just? Oh, okay. but it was in a race for kooks. Like it wasn't. Like I wasn't with the pros. Class, yeah, yeah, like bum race. But I had all the gear, and I was in practice uh, like the weekend weekend before, and was you know feeling myself going real fast, going around a turn way too fast for my level, high sided. I'm out. I, I mean, I, I wake up and I hear, and I'm like, "What is that?" I'm like, "I feel hot," and the bike is on me oh, and it's God. burning me, and I'm like, "Ow!" And then I get it off and I hit my hip so hard. That I got uh, internal bleeding, and it went it it went into my into my crutch region, but it like I had purple on my hip a little bit, and then no purple here, and then my whole package, like, the, Blew up. The, was all purple, <clears throat> and it was like I would you say blood or no, I peed blood a little bit, but not bad, bit. but my my. I don't know how to, I don't want to say it in a disgusting way, but the, that, you know, I mean, the, the, the meat and potatoes was completely purple. Hey, everybody, tell us, mate. Uh, out of known clothes. Kelly Slater invented it, so you know it's good. But I got sent stuff in the mail, and I'm wearing all of it. They got really good jeans, uh, jackets, and t shirts. I really love the t shirts. They got, uh, they like fit good, and they're comfortable. I think the best thing about, I don't know is it's comfortable. Like everything that I wear, it's not and it, it it feels like I've got sweatpants on. And speaking of sweatpants, they make those too. But they make everything. And I don't think I've ever had a clothing line send me stuff where I was just like, Yeah, I'll just wear all of it. Adonone is committed to going further in their efforts to protect the environment than any other brand. Ninety five percent of Adonone makes is organic, recycled and regenerated. Man, this is all recycled stuff? How do they make recycled stuff so comfortable? I have all the blanket shirts. I don't even know. I didn't even know I liked blanket shirts. Now I wear blanket shirts. Kelly Slater, you kick ass. Go to outofknown.com today and enter the code WOLF at checkout and you'll get 25% off your full price order. That's outofknown.com, O U T E R K N O W N.com. And remember to use the code WOLF at checkout and get 25% off. Check them out today, outofknown.com, and don't forget promo code WOLF for 25% off. I had a white pelvis yeah. and a purple, and I'd be like, I'd be like dude, I got a, my, my, my package is like completely purple. You want to see it? And people were like, no, I don't want to see it. <laughs> and then I'd just show them anyway, and they'd be like, no way! Everybody wanted to see it. It had its own Twitter. <laughs> well, at least it happened to him, but he, he probably wasn't showing it to people. I did. I, in Portugal, I'd, I'd had... You got to show somebody. No, I wasn't show. It was like, make, look and see that, like, is this okay? Because I don't right. even know what's going on right now. It's not a, it's it okay. It was like, just tell me, like, we don't have to go to the hospital right now. Wait, yours is instant. Who, who, who was deciding that? Uh, Christian Maloof, who <laughs> was with us. It was a Brixton trip. Because they got this crazy, like... Charlie horse welt like right above my groin and it just looked in like it just did not look okay because yeah, I hit I impacted right on your like hip flexor on oh, the rail okay. yeah and I was like I don't know so this might be like yeah. something might be actually bad was right that now. at the beginning of the trip it was like midway through I was able to skate by the end of it but it was was the, was the lump still there a little bit but not too bad but there was some coloration for sure yeah, yeah. but I had him just I was just it was more like 
like life or death moment. Like I don't even just look. And he he yeah. knew he was like, yeah, I'll, it's it looks okay. And I was like, all right. I've had the I hit my I hit the ground so hard that I started spitting blood. And I was like, I did the same thing you did. I was like, yeah. hey, I'm spitting up blood. Like, do I need to go to hospital? <laughs> it's probably not good, right? And this yeah. is t- the snowboarder Tara Dakitas, which I which I value her opinion. She has taken some slams, and she goes, "How much blood are you spitting?" And I go, <coughs> and I spam I'm like this much. She's like, "Ah, no, you're fine." Well, because sometimes like, oh, okay. you don't, uh, you know, as a skater, you're just like, "Um, it's all good. Like, I'm I'm all good." But sometimes you need someone to be like, "No, that yeah, that's not okay. We need yeah. to go." Get that checked out. I remember when uh, we were doing, I think it was Frito-Lay stuff. I did a big thing for Frito-Lay. Oh, and I broke my arm. And then you were skating with Sean and Shay, right? I don't know. They had some kind of crew of kids skating for it. Yeah. I, I, th- I think that, it was Sean and Shay were part of it. And you guys were in Balboa Park. And then he called me from someone else's phone. He's like, I think I hurt my elbow. I can't remember. I I, I I thought it was okay, and I was like, "Well, can you move it?" Yeah, I think so. And so, like, not in a panic. He I was just like, I think. "Well, I he, it was it would take a lot for him to call me." Okay, at that time okay. in his life. Okay, you know, if, if he was out skating, and then okay. I was just like, "I think he'll be okay." And then when he got home, I realized that he was not okay. No, that that was a big regret. That one I remember. Yeah. I hyperextended it. I put it back. Oh, okay. And it went like that, but really quick. Yeah. And I was like. I think when you're a kid like that, you don't understand what really happened. You're yeah. like, that just felt really weird. Yeah. And, but it, then it just went full, like, lock up. But it was, it was like, really black and blue by the time you got home. Yeah. Oh, it was that's like... That's when I was just thinking, like, I should have just drove down there. Like, but I see I that. Taken, but I <laughs> but taken the hint. if he's calling and he's not crying or screaming, it is... I, I'm le- I always lean, you know, maybe when my kids get hurt, I'm like, I don't, but I, I think off. that yeah. what happened was he was looking more for me to be like, okay, I'll come get you as opposed to, is this okay? Were you? I don't really, I just remember it was, we were in down in San Diego. So I don't think I even knew where I was. I was just like, oh yeah. Trying to Bobo park. Yeah. Trying to more so be like, could you just come get me? Cause I don't want to just sit here the rest of the day. Yeah. Like I can't skate anymore. That was okay. more, I guess <laughs> that the mindset, not like panic mode. Do you remember a time not skating like in your life? Mm. I mean, I remember times where I wasn't really skating, but I feel like I, by choice where you yeah. had already been and you came out. Yeah. But I remember, I feel like I always remember having like a board yeah. somewhere near that I could, Skate if I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, you but. used to go down the driveway at the house that Carl's bad after we moved from Fallbrook to the house they lived in in high school. And the driveway was super steep. And then it met with a road that was steep. And he would go from the top drive. I remember caught him doing it once. And he was so small. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where your feet are just swimming on the grip tape. Yeah. And he would go down this thing. And I just remember seeing him hit the like, didn't down the driveway and I was like okay let's, that's we're not doing that anymore like, we, <laughs> but he'd already been doing it he'd already been doing it yeah like dad come because I this. thought he was just out there kind of yeah. goofing around and, and whatever um, and there and there was a moment where I remember my brother too was there and he's like you let him do that I was like that's the first time I ever seen him do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, when did you become so metal metal yeah cause he's not like he <laughs> he like whatever, dude. You know Metallica and stuff, but he's not metal. Like yeah. he's like a nerd. he's like a like technical nerd guy. And you and I remember going to a Halloween party, and you became a man. Like I missed an error or whatever, and all of a sudden you're as tall as me. And you were like, "Hey, man, how's it going?" I'm like, "Riley." And you had a is it Sabbath or Sabbath? Yeah, that yeah. Was you like got a black Sabbath tattoo, tattoo on your yeah. forearm. It's on like yeah the outside. Yeah, I think this arm. Yeah. It's metal. Yeah, it's I don't metal know. as fuck, I mean, and I was like, "Wait, what? Just he- did you know skate videos? Sure. I guess growing up watching them, like anybody in particular soundtracks, and I think too, I was at a, it was at the point where, like when I was growing up where YouTube and those things were becoming much more accessible to like find music really easily. Yeah, so that kind of me and my friends would go down those rabbit holes and just get stoked on finding new." New bands and stuff like new that. New bands you know? that had been around for... Yeah, or like bands that were, you know, we would try to just find obscure whatever, like hard rock bands from back in the day that were kind of just resurfacing because of 
because of the internet and YouTube and stuff. So, so how old were you when you got into probably like metal? I don't know, like fourteen maybe or something. Like yeah. I think I think I got hurt at one point when I was around fourteen, and that was when I bought a guitar just to kind of dork around with and okay. have something to do to pass the time. And was that I would just watch elbow or ankle, ankle I think, and I would just watch youtube videos of how to play songs like black sabbath songs and is that your foundation of playing guitar like you started playing guitar and you were into metal or yeah i mean i just like i said i would just learn to play like songs that i wanted that i like to listen to i never took any more or like formal right training of yeah me neither to play guitar yeah but you played what was it at um kelly when you, you guys played oh yeah i mean i guess like seven nation i kind of always was messing around with the yeah. guitar but yeah jacob who filmed like all the the shep dogs videos that's one of my best okay. buddies he he was really good at guitar really young and he his dad was kind of into you know that type of music and would show us stuff and i feel like i feel like it was just always around skating though kind of i don't know yeah i mean there was a huge section of it that was into metal yeah, for sure like there the was first also I was thinking about, I just watched, like, the first Flip video, the Sorry video recently, and I was just listening to this, like, the soundtrack I was thinking about. That's, like, one of, you know, I would have been, I don't even know, 10 or 11 maybe then. So you're listening to, like, you know, the Stooges and all these kind of, like, like gray matter. and Yeah, lame. I know. Just, like, big. Lame? <laughs> <laughs> He's saying he likes it. He's no, I, uh, yeah, I love it. Those are like bands that I like. So wait, when you he's were not 10. bringing up a skate video because he didn't like the music, he's bringing up a skate video because he liked. No, it. it's a really good soundtrack. <laughs> that, that's like one of the videos that has like an epic skate soundtrack. So how did you jump into metal from there? <laughs> it's like you said, like the Stooges, you know, like it's stuff all, like that. You kind of you go Jason. down like a have rabbit to be so hole. Cut and dry. It's kind Jesus. Of, well, the Stooges are like the first ever like hard rock metal like 1969. That's when they were doing that. Their, their, their things became every things like came before every Metallica. heavy band always it's I'm crazy. <laughs> Black Sabbath was the first metal band. All right. Yeah, I I would feel like that's definitely true, but but the Stooges is what led me to those type of go. bands. Okay. Yeah, no, Stooges, Stooges was the gateway. Stooges helped. All right, all right. Riley texted me on right after his 18th birthday a picture of his. Uh, Black Sabbath tattoo. And how did you feel? <laughs> That's cool. That's really how he you... said. Yeah, he was. He said. Uh, he said I was torn between getting this or Led Zeppelin, which is yeah. couldn't go wrong either way. Yeah, I definitely love both. I'm glad. I think that now finding out that Sabbath was a little more or a little less like controversial, I guess. And in, in recent years, Led Zeppelin has they have quite oh quite a, like, yeah yeah controversial Forget past but i mean it's still led zeppelin so it doesn't really matter but, i saw a video uh, of black sabbath doing blue suede shoes cover like before they were big time yeah and i'm like wait you're doing blues music well yeah and that made like, me realize blues is yeah kind of the beginning of Everyone rock and roll kind of stole and, blues and made it and robert johnson with the yeah like the crossroads song it's like the beginning of evil like where yeah. it was like I sold my soul yeah. to be this guitarist. And yep. I was like, that's the first metal lyric ever. It is. Yeah. Robert Johnson's, first, like when he's like, I went down to the crossroads it, and made a debatable, deal. debatable, but okay. You yeah. can debate it if you want, but I, the answer is <laughs> that. That is metal. It is sure. metal is, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I definitely, but yeah, I mean, I feel like Metallica was one of those bands that it, took me a little longer to appreciate because I was just more like into the 70s type yeah, yeah. hard rock metal yeah. stuff. But then I think once I really got stoked on Cliff Burton is when I appreciated Metallica more. Yeah. But he had a conversation with my co-host the other day about Cliff Burton being the greatest bass player that has ever lived, like rock and roll bass player. And then knowing that Dave Mustaine was the guitarist for Megadeth and uh, sorry for Metallica and they aced him because he was drinking too much and he mm -hmm. wouldn't get sober. Yeah. And it's like, if Cliff didn't die and, and Dave Mustaine was like, Oh really? You guys are going to kick me off? Like, okay, I'll get my stuff together. Cause eventually yeah. he did like now he's a sober guy for sure. And, and he's, this is hard to say, but he's better than Kurt. 
in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I haven't, I guess I've never like, really thought about, yeah. Imagine if they, he but. didn't, imagine if those four <laughs> were still together. I think yeah. that there would be. No It'd be a huge band. It'd be no yeah. question. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. What They'd be as big as Metallica or Megadeth. They'd yeah. be bigger than Metallica, which is They'd not even combined, possible. The combined of forces. Are they? Do they just still don't like each other? No, they. I think they patched it. I saw that. You probably didn't watch it, but they had a documentary. It was very painful for me. What the. Some, Some kind of monster. monster? Yeah. Yeah, I watched Where they it. had like a therapist there. And, and I think I watched it more just like. I don't know. I wasn't too like obsessed about the band at the time i just watched it and i was like oh yeah i mean i guess that's what happens to <laughs> those yeah. those kind of bands or, or, like, or they or they fall apart completely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they really wanted to stick together but i remember dave was crying about yeah. how he regretted it. he's like you know i'd bring out a new album and it'd do well and then you guys would bring one out and would crush yeah. my album and i'm like oh man what a you know because you're still Dave Mustaine, you're great, you know? But yeah. like to see Metallica... I'm like, definitely more of a Metallica fan than a Megadeth fan. But right, because they, they're better. They know? just... I think... I just think that Cliff brought that, like, rock and roll aspect to it, which yeah. made it a little more uh, tangible for me, versus Megadeth feels a little... It's, like, just not not my type of style. It's I math guess. metal. Yeah, it's a little... I don't know. Like, Cliff just kind of made it feel more organic and not so he was very real yeah like to have bell bottoms he was cool yeah i mean i've always like Misfits see all the photos of him running yeah like leonard skinner shirts and they right. would, they you know hear stories of them giving him shit and he's just like i don't care these bands rule yeah 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 it didn't seem like he answered to anybody i just i can't believe what he was what 24 when he died yeah. it's just hard to believe that someone could do those albums before they're 24 mm. is like unbelievable. I mean, <clears throat> Kill 'em All was like, they were all teenagers. Yeah. Which is. It was cool when we saw him in San Diego. We met Cliff Burton's dad. Mm. You did? Yeah. 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 How he was, was that? It was I cool. mean, I just Ka said. Calvin hi. recognized him. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. they did a really cool tribute when they played like Pulling Teeth and Robert Chihio did it and they blasted Cliff from that like mm. day on the field That's concert. Awesome. And it was, yeah, it was cool that. That concert felt like they, I don't know, it, it seemed like much more of a it was ideal concert than like them on any other tour. They just played so much old stuff. Yeah. Like Kill 'em All and a lot of rad old to songs. To an entire stadium of people. Yeah, that was That's insane. pretty awesome. It was wild. So yeah. you're in a band, right? Yeah, but we haven't really played or jammed in quite a while, honestly, but we do. Yeah, like, that's what I, I would say, besides other questions, people ask me a lot about your band oh really i mean we i don't know i think the last tour we did i just wasn't having like fun doing it it just felt i don't know like forced or something and yeah i just wanted to be like skating and it's just that lifestyle as i didn't really like the vibe of being so um stuck in like a bar in a van and i just like more making the music i didn't expect to us to be doing like tours like that so it kind of is it okay for you to do tours of skateboarding or do you feel like you're no because i like i like like waking up early and like being in in the the environment we're in like if you're in you know a town i like being out and driving and seeing finding skate spots and like really being in it i feel like on the, the tour the band tour stuff you're just kind of stuck in like a venue and and i wasn't at that point really having the best time like socializing in that bar environment it just felt like i was trying to not drink so much so it just felt yeah i just felt i don't know out of place or something is it, it the athlete in you you think yeah i think when, once i like i think once i got hooked on jujitsu it kind of took over that because i was just so stoked to be using my body as like yeah as like an athletic type of output and again. then staying up super late and I don't would I wouldn't imagine anybody's eating anything too. Yeah, I mean, healthy. you're just eating at gas stations, right. and you're just like, even if you're trying to be on a good track, you can't. It's just hard, and that. And I I don't know. I just wasn't really having fun, and I was like, if this is this is just kind of not fun, then why am I doing it? You know. Yeah. So. Did you feel like in that short period of time that that things were growing? Yeah, we were on like a tour that got booked for us by this kind of bigger promoter so the venues were kind of i thought too big for the the magnitude of what the band was i think he expected more of a 
uh, like show out for it, you know? So yeah. just felt that part, like it, we'd be in a venue where it fits 500 people, but there would be 200. So it just felt yeah dead. And I was like, man, if we just would have played in like a f- more fun, smaller bar environment, 200 yeah. people would feel like a good time. Yeah. And so that kind of was not the most encouraging. And then it, and it actually ended because every, almost everyone got COVID except, a couple people on the tour there was another band oh that's right and that's when you i was just Detroit. like oh this is just no that was a different time oh. but then it happened again on another tour and that's when i was like this is just i didn't know this what the state of like touring would be any in the next few years because of that covid thing kept happening and yeah. i was just like this but just I remember feels weird when you were in detroit you called me and you were super sick and it was before people even really knew what it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he's just going to different clinics. Like, I don't know what's wrong, and I'm, I don't know how to help. Yeah. And we came to find out. And that's I, probably what it was. Like, I got sick, early. but I, I wasn't, yeah. you know, wasn't But you guys, too bad. you guys skipped a few shows. That, no, that ended it. Yeah, that was that the end of it, yeah. us, us playing. We were with this band called The Black Lips, and they kept going, but that was the end of it for us, yeah. How many people in the band were sick at one time? Uh... On that one, the first yeah. time, I think a couple of us were just like, we were just coughing and we were in Montreal in the, or no, sorry, Toronto in the winter and it was snowing and we were just all just like dying and we were like, this is, wow, this is brutal. And, yeah. and I w- couldn't even think about trying to like actually play a show. I was just thinking about I think that was trying to feel better. Even. It was the end. No, it was, it was literally in January of 20, 2020. 20, yeah. Yeah. So it was right. I remember going to the clinic and they asked me, have you been to these places? And we were, we had been to every place they listed <laughs> off. It was like New York, whatever, all these places. I was like, yeah, I've been to all of them. That was the first time I remember they gave me a mask and I was wearing it. And I just felt like something was way wrong. This feels crazy. Yep. How sick did you get? Pretty sick, but I think I just prolonged it by just being like, yeah. In venues in the snow not around resting. a bunch of people not resting. Yeah, my rest was terrible. Right. So I definitely learned a lot from those years of just how to take care of your body more and how important yeah. sleep is. I feel like I prioritize sleep now more than anything in my life pretty much. Would you be interested in going on tour again musically? I just think it would have to be something that felt fun and like organic and but honestly, probably not. Just because I not because it wouldn't be fun. I just don't really have an interest to be doing that on a stage in front of people. I'd rather just do it for fun with my friends like right. in a garage somewhere, you know. The bit that you like about it. Yeah, exactly. We, we were talking to a friend of ours about doing like a song for a vi- like a skate video, just like kind of watching it and play and like make a song. Like something like that soundtrack. sounds fun. Yeah, like a soundtrack or something. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, it just didn't. It felt like it ran its course for me, kind of mentally. Yeah, but, but skateboard tour, ready to go. Yeah, we were before I hurt my shoulder. We've been going out. We kind of commandeered the birdhouse van. We've been that's handy. <laughs> yeah, using it a lot. But uh, yeah, we've been going to to Vegas a lot because there's just a lot of spots. No one really skates out there, and there's just so much, so much development. Always they're building new stuff all the time. Yeah, and it's just quick and like you know we go out there and get an Airbnb and it's pretty cheap and it's known for being cheap because people go to the strip and spend all this money, but we just go there to skate. So we're just like out outside the the city a little bit. So this is not demos. This is to film. Just filming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so what about demos? Would you, is that sound fun to you? Yeah, we did a couple on this thrasher, that thrasher vacation trip. We did a couple of demos and it was fun. I mean, the park we did one of them at was kind of rough and I forgot about (laughs) how, how that can feel. Just trying to force something in a park that is not, not the best, but it was actually, we, we went there on the, uh, I don't know if I was with you maybe, but they were like the gigantic skate park tour came here. It's like this huge concrete park in, uh, yeah. in Calgary and yeah, with the full pipe, with the full pipe. Yeah. yeah. I was. Yeah. Did I have fun? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was the g- gigantic skate park tour and we were on the ESPN bus. Yes. you had And fun. Alex Charles oh, right. was yeah, there. That's yeah. why I don't remember it. That what? I just remember everyone was like, Alex Chalmers was here. That was like, they kept saying that at the demo. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, there's a, there's sort of a half pipe area out of the full. There's pipe. so many, it's like the biggest skate park yeah. ever. It's huge. I had a dream about Alex Chalmers like a month ago. He was, we saw him. It was cool. Which is out of the blue, made no sense. And it was in a hotel. Well, speaking of the loop, he, he came to the loop. Yeah. yeah he was right. That makes sense. 
Came to town. Like, I told him it was here. Came to town. Did it. Went home. That doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> yeah, those certain people yeah, he's doing got the loop makes <clears throat> perfect sense, you know? He's got it. Can what you do the restroom you? real fast before we keep going? What? Can I go pee real quick? Yeah. yeah. I have to go pee real fast. You're the first to ever do this, just so you know. Really? Yeah. I like awesome. You okay. did it once. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> you did it once, and then we ended the show. We, oh, wait, so you, you were like, I gotta, I gotta pee, I gotta pee. And they were like, we're, oh, we're almost at an hour. You, you, so You didn't let me come done. back? I think we, you held it just long enough for us to, I to see go how an it hour. Is. All right. Last time I tried to sleep, I snored and my cat tapped me on the shoulder and said, seriously, Jason, uh, now I got shh tape and my cat and I sleep like bold babies. No more tossing and turning, waking up tired or stuffy. That's a very important thing. I like to wake up. Not stuffy, so that I breathe. Breathing is fun. Imagine if you were able to wake up feeling more rested without a stuffy nose. Imagine if you were able to put on mouth tape and it covers your mouth and stays on all night. Picture yourself being able to wake up without your partner yelling or meowing about how obnoxious and loud your snoring is. This product allows you to facilitate better oxygenation of the blood as your nose filters warms and humidifies the air prior to reaching your lungs they are bigger they are stickier they are comfier Shh, tape knows they can increase your quality of sleep and they want you to get started as soon as possible to help they're giving you the chance to buy Shh, tape for 50 percent off using the code wolf 50 on their website shtape.com and sleep tonight and Shh, tape a better way to mouth tape Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook at sh underscore tape and share your success stories. www.shtape.com. Oh, do you remember going on those skate park tours, like the, the ESPN ones? Yeah, I remember on like sp- certain random parks, I feel like, but that's kind of it. Yeah. I, I remember. Always, I just wonder what, what was, what stood out in those days? Because we were. We were on the go all so much. I mean, we were on the go so much that that you you were going to public school, and I got a very stern warning mm-hmm. from the principal that if you miss any more school, you will be Mark Truant and you will not pass the grade. Yeah, I don't remember like specifics. I just remember the Parks and Barry. Like, I remember <laughs> having, I hurt my elbow or something, and. Make him making me go in the pool at like 6 a.m. and it was freezing. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I have to go in there? It was, I like didn't understand the concept of why he was making me do that. That's one yeah. thing I remember. Yeah, he got a little um, overzealous in those days. I was pretty young, too. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah, you had youth on your side. You could have just slept it off. Yeah. But he was like, you got to get in the pool he was and do training me things. like I was a yeah, yeah. Olympic level athlete. He was, was very <laughs> serious. I have nightmares. But I mean, that, that was when you actually broke your elbow, right? I think I just heard it on the trip. Okay. Yeah. And do you I remember, remember closing you... demos. I remember a couple of them where in the, we went vert, then we went to the course, mm-hmm. and there was something that you were working on where it was like, no way. And then you did it, and it was like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's like, that's the end of the, all of us doing the demo. And we all agreed. Like it was something. <laughs> yeah. It's probably a good out for the dudes it, that didn't want to actually skate the demo anymore. And that was the other thing. You wouldn't stop. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And you, it was, it was like a little unfair cause you know, you're 10 and, <laughs> yeah. you, and you felt great he, after everything. He shut down a huck jam. I mean, it was, you know, there's the arena tour. It was this big ramp. Mm. And so we did all these routines and whatnot. And then we would do our jam and then at the halftime, it, they would just do this, these sort of product giveaways and whatever. And then Riley started skating in the halftime. He started trying 540s. And then, Way below coping, but... Yeah. You did one. And then he made he one. did one, yeah. Melon grab. Yeah. Dude. And it shut the place down. Yeah. It was like, we had already done our jam. It, you know, it was, it was Bob and Bucky and yeah, Matt Hoffman yeah, yeah. And, and Dave Mira and everyone. And then Riley did 540 and was like, all right, that's, that's the best thing it's yeah. going to see tonight. Yeah, Agreed. Was, that was, I think that's the only one, yeah, I've never done. That was the only <laughs> one, yeah. Another. You, c- you came back and tried one at a different ramp and slid out and kind of a bad one. Oh, really? And I could tell you were like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I anymore. remember, I mean, I've done it like off like a quarter pipe to bank, like in a, oh, yeah, a uh-huh. skate park, yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I'd want to try to do one on vert one day, but I think the time is just, yeah, it's past. 
It's never too late to do a five. <laughs> That's, <40. true>. That's true. <laughs> what do you grab? Mute? No, nah, same Melon. as Melon. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what I would try to grab if I didn't try another one. I think just based off your... I think nose grab is what I would yeah. try. Yeah, because I, I was... Right before you finished that sentence, I was like, you're out of your mind, but knowing how you can skate things. Yeah. Yeah, because you're going to get a good pop. If you can see it again... It yeah. doesn't matter. But he, like, he does nose grabs over all kinds of stuff. That's a, like, that's why I know you could do it. And yeah, else, like yeah. backside 360 nose grab is definitely a trick I feel comfortable. Because you can get over it again and see it. Yeah, I wouldn't go upside down, though. I would nah. do the leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who cares? The twirl sideways. So, take it. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. it's still a 540. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, flipping a nose a lot grab of those 540. Park guys do it nose grab like that, I've noticed. A lot of what, who? Like the, the park skins. guys. Yeah. Yeah, because it feels more street style mm. it yeah. seems yeah because yeah, you can sit if you can get back over and see the landing yep it's like the mute when you go upside down like your there's dad no does joke. yeah there's a there's a you know where you are you don't see where you are yeah and then at the last second you do but that yeah. whole way before it's because he's got so many like yeah. when he's upside down he's like okay this is right you I know? just feel like I know if I did nose grab, I would never over rotate. But I feel like if yeah. I, the mute one, it just seems like you're yep. just asking to go. Me too. Back to the yeah. yeah. Or break your leg. Yeah. Yeah. That could happen. You didn't have to bring Apparently. that up, but yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yep. I would just rather. <laughs> it's okay, I got through it. I would rather see where I'm going the whole time. For yeah, sure. agreed. I'm with you. Yeah. What What inspired you to build the vert ramp at your old house? Uh, I think I just had the space and. I had made some money off of selling the other house and I just wanted, I wanted to skate a ramp that wasn't this big, but still felt like a vert ramp. Mm -hmm. And so I just hit the guys up that, um, some, I forget who put me in contact with them, but they did Elliot's I think and stuff. And yeah. they, uh, they were like, yeah, we could do it. And so just went for it and it was fun. Got to, you know, have some fun sessions and, utilize it but i didn't i don't think i got to the level i was hoping to but i think it yeah i don't know if it's tricky is it gone now yeah they took yeah because i'm selling the house so they took we had to tear it down but would you contemplate doing another one uh i don't have any space for it but right. but I, I liked skating that size ramp yeah. it felt yeah. more my style than mm -hmm. jumping onto the big big one you know it is different yeah it's a lot more it's similar to Mega Ramp a little bit. Like it's it's easier because it's everything's slower. Yeah. But you are going way faster, and there's definitely a more flat-footed vert. Legs. You're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. you have to have a little bit more. You're 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 in the ramp more. Like I get I feel like when I'm I ride the Vans ramp here all the time. Yeah. The Vans ramp to me yeah. is more of like a <laughs> it's a funny really though, steep mini ramp. But yeah. you guys you guys used to come here every Monday. No, I know, but that's what I mean. I just, I just felt like I was just free falling on every air, even after getting used to it. Yeah, it just felt so big. I just felt because it's not like we skate any other yeah. bowls or anything. So it's yeah. just like yeah, what's similar to that? It's so big. Yeah, right. exactly. So he was doing. Uh, he had one of my old school decks, and he was doing eggplants on it. You could do yeah. eggplants. I did a few, and then I slammed once, and it kind of. Is the one you were telling me about? Yeah, I came in and didn't point my nose forward enough and just kind of belly flop to the floor oh, wow. and it hurt pretty bad. It's yeah. fair. Vert's kind of like moto. You don't slam too much, but when you do, it's a big one. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're me. Just slam all the time on everything. I do moto. Same as I skate for everyone's like, yeah, every now and then you take a big one. I'm like, I just, I just slam. Yeah. Everywhere <laughs> I go, means you're just going doing everything. It. Yeah. Like if I cook, I'm going to burn my hands. Like, yeah, I'm just accident prone, man. <laughs> just going big, going for it. Yeah. I just go for it. Yeah. That was it. Riley broke his elbow when he was ten, maybe eleven, and you had that elbow cast. Many, yeah, I've had many of them. I was that, gonna the say first one, um, but I remember the first one, and then we went to South Africa. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, I remember that for time. the a skate park opening in Durban, South Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like the whole thing was set. He was gonna go, and he's just like, oh, I still want to go. Yeah. Like, well, okay, I don't know if you can skate. He's like, Oh, I don't. Wanna we're in South Africa, we're going safari, and, and so it's fair. He went, and then, and then he started skating. Did you know you were going to skate? I, I don't know. I don't think I thought that much about. Okay. I don't think I thought that far ahead. And then I got. I in think I just wanted to go. Skate. Who got? Yeah. Who you get in trouble? Just, oh, yeah, sir. You know. Yep. 
No. That was the one that Tebow was with us, right? I think so, yeah. 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 And then and then I just said, like, but he's not going to break his elbow again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's not true. laughs> Did you get hurt? No. It's okay, fine, well, then man. you were right. Dad, nice yeah, work. Funny. He was yeah. doing it. Yeah. How many times have you broke your elbow? Too many, yeah. Right? It's been a while since I've had a good elbow slam. but Both twice, I think. Right? Probably more than more, I was gonna more say. than we got diagnosed, probably. But <laughs> that's true. Yeah, um, I just remember always having an elbow cast, like growing up. All yeah, the time. yeah. And then, and then we one time we just like we just took it off ourselves because yeah, he felt good. So skateboard doctors. And then I remember you straightened it, and you were so scared because it felt like it wasn't ever going to yeah. be straight again. Yeah. How are you with jujitsu with all those elbow problems? I remember when I first started, I was having a lot of elbow pain, almost like like a tennis elbow or tendonitis from yeah. like framing and yeah. doing that stuff. But then I think it's kind of like skating or anything. Like you just, I don't know, you just get like hard into it and then you just kind of, it just kind of goes away. How are you with when people have you in arm bars and stuff? Are you quick to tap or you think your arm's um, going to hold? I'm pretty decent at getting out of arm bars, but I'm not going to like ego let right. my arm break. So. Right. Because I feel like because of my knee injuries and stuff, yeah. when people do leg locks on me, I just I just don't. Because there's like a, there's sure. a second there where I can make a move and get it out. Yeah. Or I could just go and well, tap yeah. because I don't want to risk it. I think it. I, I've learned that a lot of times people are being really nice with the leg locks. So I don't, it's almost like a, like a sparring thing where, you know, if someone throws like a head kick and then someone catches it, you're like, no, you can't do that. Like I would have just that would have connected, you know? So you, I feel like I know when I'm like, yeah, you got it. And I just tap, you know, okay. like they're not going to rip it, but I, we both know that. Okay. That's it. You know, So you spar with people that, you know, I do a lot, but a lot of times I'll spar with, we have like an open mat at our gym and I'll spar with other guys. And I've gone, I've gone to other gyms and sparred there and stuff. I, I like no gi a lot more. I don't really like Me too. the gi too much, but yeah, I will tell people like if I've ever gone on the road and people are like, why don't you roll with this? I'm like, okay. And then I've t I'm like, hey, everybody. So and it's easier now because I'm older. I'll be like, yep. so anyway, I'm old, and I'm in my fifties. So if you guys get my legs, just know, yeah, like don't be dicks. Like you know, because I, mean? Cause I, I don't. They're glass. Yeah, and then I feel like I explain like, that, and people are less inclined to yank it. I feel like it's one of those things too, where like we have a guy at our gym that teaches some of the Nogi classes and he is like a 10th planet black belt. And yeah. when I roll with him, he won't even really go for my legs. But if you pretend like initiate that type of game, that's the go to. If you grab his leg, he he's like, yours. okay, well now I'm yeah. going to go for you. And then it's like, then I feel like it's my first day again. Cause yeah. that stuff is like a whole different. I'm 10th world, planet but. guy too. So my oh, okay. coach is a 10th yeah. planet black belt. And every time he goes down there, I'm just like, Good to no, yeah. leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's like did you did you want to do stem cells? so we just got back from columbia doing stem cells my neck and shoulders his um elbows, elbows and ankles. ankles you're welcome yeah. the wolf yep. hooking up the the Set hawks um but did you was that more for jujitsu uh no i did it because i really wanted to like i'd been skating a lot and feeling like probably the most comfortable I've felt on the board in a while and like doing stuff that I knew was, you know, I was going to be like just limping around all the time and feeling sore and stuff. So A afterwards, just because of how it is now, I just felt like I wanted to do it to prolong this kind of intensity. But I'm saying I'm you're, at you're, right now you're saying skating. it was going to be sore because you have this experience that when you push it, you're in pain afterwards. Yeah, that, and I'm just saying I just wanted to prolong staying in this moment where I'm mm -hmm. feeling really strong and comfortable on my board and just do everything I can to mm -hmm. stay there. But definitely wasn't a uh, like a problem that it was going to help with jiu-jitsu either. I'll take that for but sure. But it's yeah. a bonus. That's what I mean, yeah. Because it is going to help. It's going to help for sure, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even some of the old dudes, you know, the older black belts, they're like, God, you're creaky for someone who's 31 you know yeah. <laughs> like yeah everything is destroyed i know it's so i know like, mma guys talk about injuries and it's like you guys every now and then you like in pro fighters you guys get knocked out like that's no joke you know but when it comes to injuries like yeah. how many injuries they've had they always think that they're 
they've been through it and seen it all. And then I'll tell them a little bit about some of mine and they're like, what the hell? And I'm like, yeah, yeah dude, skateboarding is... Seems like the knees are the big one mm. in MMA. I hear a lot of people always right. having trouble with, but I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've had, you know, three surgeries on my right ankle, one on my left. These things are just destroyed. So, But when you were growing up and, and going through injuries, did you feel like... Like, it was really scary, or did you feel like, I just want to get through this and get back to skating? I don't think there was ever any that were, like, scary enough to where I thought too heavily on it. But mm -hmm. I think at one point with my, remember with my right ankle when I was, like, 22, when I think. In, in Italy? When I got, no, that was my, that was after all that. But when I got the surgery and then it didn't work, because oh, it was a cadaver yeah. one. And I just felt just like defeated, just like yeah. I did what I was supposed to do, and it didn't work. And, and now you have now, to go back and do it again. But I was like, do I even do it? Like I don't know, you yeah. know. Like I just felt just defeated and kind of not scared, more so just like I just had no more will to put energy towards right. making it better. Because the I kinda, rehab, the surgery, yeah, the, all and the things I just that you like, know you're gonna have to do. I again. remember definitely crying from just like knowing what I was going to have to go through again. Because yeah. I wasn't in pain. It wasn't hurt. I just knew what was the next mm -hmm. yeah. eight months of my life again. And I right. was just like, I don't know. But then I went to a new foot specialist, Dr. Carrero and Encinitas, and that pretty much changed my my life. Like I was skating again in like four or five months, feeling as good as I ever did. Cause he he, yeah. did he basically did a surgery on Riley that he took – onwards from there where he's it like, was oh, like pretty yeah surgery. it was like kind of newer technology it's called like an internal brace so it's like synthetic ligaments like kind of like they're not my ligaments it's like strands of carbon fiber type he's material sick. he did and it for calvin too yeah and it works worked really well yeah and now he does it for other people he had been doing it he gave me a couple um journals of people that he did it on like yeah. he did it on this girl soccer player and yeah. she i read her like progress or whatever but um it was still pretty new like the technology of doing it so yeah i think i was the first person who he did it on that was gonna really put it to the test of what right yeah i was so what it could do you found him and afterwards so your ankle being that jacked and not looking like it's gonna heal and you knowing that information who's more dark about it it sounds like you um, felt it more than he did yeah I, I i just do whatever i can to use my connections right yeah to find the right person i mean i'm, I'm lucky that i know the head of er at our local hospital and and hey man a lot of connections and things and with the stem cells and bio accelerator that was the th i know you didn't want to do it i know you're not into things like that yeah but i was as a person that couldn't run in my 30s that can run now after getting them, I I, I know that if I go, hey, man, you got to go to Columbia, you'd be like, dude, please well, don't it was, to push me. Riley was the catalyst. I told him that Riley I wanted to, to, to do it. Yeah, Riley said I wanted to try to do this for my elbows and my, my ankles, my joints. Right. And then I said, well, it, I, you know, I've tried everything to get relief from my neck. Let's try that. Yeah. And so. it's not even... Yeah, but he told you to go because of me. So you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah. Man. And Jason Just, got me the free cold the, plunge, so I'm forever thankful okay, for that. Okay, yeah. That yeah. Is or like, it could be that... That's my favorite He won't thank me. That's my favorite no, item. No, I, I, I am own. thanking you. <sighs> okay. Thanks for the connection. You're Thank welcome? You. Man. Yeah. I, I just had seen a lot about it through kind of the MMA world because those yeah. guys are always... I feel like they're kind of on the forefront now of like... Mm -hmm. yep being an optimal physical condition, and I just listened to so many of the, those podcasts and interviews and stuff, so I... Just figured well, I, if it works yeah. for them, it should I saw work it for firsthand skating, with him so. and it just with Andy. Does. Yeah, like him and Andy were the success stories that I needed to because yeah. you know it was a lot to commit a week to go yeah. down there and yeah, like I mean, skating it was, again it was a lot after not general. skating for over a decade, and then right when I started skating again, my MCL snapped off, so I had to get a cadaver replacement. Yeah, but when I got those stem cells and I started skating again. Like, I couldn't knee slide for the last 10 years of my skateboard career. You had the, like, where you couldn't sit on your feet type... No way. Restriction, yeah. yeah. Go out to the side. I, I would put... I touch my knee and then flick Go out and skid in my yeah. butt. Yeah. There's no... 
Like there's times still th- to this day where if I knee slide and I stay on my knees all the way to a stop, yeah. it's almost like I've made a new trick. Like I go, <laughs> but, do you guys yeah. see that? And people yeah. are like, what are you do- talking about? I'm like, there was a complete knee slide <laughs> yeah. all the way to the flat. That is a trick. Yeah, yeah. it is a trick now. Like, cause there was a time there I've where there was not happening. I've seen my friends have happening. a harder time doing that than a 360 flip. They're like, I don't know. I don't get how you do it. Yeah. And I'm like, you oh, just, yeah. I don't know. You just put your knees down and. Yeah, I wanted that back it's, so it's bad. It's just that one step thing. Yeah, but, yeah. But he learned it when he was. But that's like, I have no issue whatsoever. I can, I can sit on my feet with my knees bent and like put my back on the ground has never been my issue but i can't my knee can't go over my toe at all like my ankle is just a boot it's just stuck so like still? that's yeah still well i mean i'm hoping after the stem cells that'll be the the thing that fixes i mean it's it, not a but. it's not like i've i have 14 year old ankles again, no totally but, it, but does it will you notice the difference mm-hmm. absolutely people have asked me they're like well what does it do? i'm like honestly if i if I can just skate without having to limp the next day after trying a trick, then yeah, that's that, enough that, for me to be yeah, like, yeah. it's worth and it. And that's why I went, because I my neck just hurts after I skate yeah, or yeah. after I do stuff. Um, and it's been, well, it's been two weeks now. It's only I skated get for the first time just now. You look great. And I did a melon grab. You did. First melon grab since my surgery. Really? See? Yeah. Wow. You're welcome. That's awesome. Thanks to Jason. Yeah. Thanks to me. <laughs> Thank you. Jason allowed me to do a melon grab. That's why I'm sitting here. It's all I wanted, yeah, I dude. It's yeah. all I wanted. This is all I wanted. Okay, you're all welcome. I'm, I'm going to see you later. To skate for sure. I'm done. My work is done here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I wonder if we can more to offer. convince Riley to cross over to Vert. Why don't you just let him live, dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm never. I'm not opposed to ever skating Vert, but I just feel like my the the drive to like progress in it is kind of just not there Yeah, because you've already done so much and like your stories of your ankles and stuff it's like yeah let me get into vert skating now and, <laughs> yeah. and i'm no, sure I, everything will work out it's fine just more that I, I, it's more that i want to skate with the kids i get and it i get sometimes it. i can convince them to come over here yeah there is a session i mean there was like there was a session recently with keegan miles and calvin wow see that's badass I, that I can, pretty cool my son snowboards now and he told yeah. me like he's working on a trick and he's like what's the one where you know you grab it and then you kind of arch back and i was like well which hand do you grab it with like and he's method. like my front hand i'm like a method air yeah. he's like yeah i can do method airs i'm like dude yeah. if you just ask me that you can't do it because you, you you're yeah. supposed to know the name of it before you can do them <laughs> yeah and then the next weekend he sends me a video of him doing a method air over the thing and he's like told you dude and i was like <laughs> But it made me so happy to see him yeah. do a method air. I remember I had a friend though that was like that skating who just he didn't even know anything. He was he was just naturally good and just didn't he didn't even know what the tricks were he was doing. And I just always thought that was like I just thought it was rad. I was yeah, like, that's pretty yes. cool. I try I honestly try to carry that in with me to jujitsu where I don't I try to not nerd out too hard on all the terms and everything because yeah. I just want to just I just want to be good and have fun and roll. I don't really care too much about it. I'm all so that. with you when it comes to jujitsu, like when it comes to people announcing and stuff, because I'm a talker and people are like, why don't you do, why don't you announce fights? And I'm like, because I don't know the names of that stuff. Yeah. Like I'm more of a, I want to do it. I give a crap what it's called. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it's like, I don't know any, I don't know any musical chord if you told me to play one, yeah, but I can either. play the guitar. Can you read music? No, me not neither. at all. I yeah. don't know anything. I think that. I learned the same way as you, dude. There was yeah. videos you where... You guys I, both shred guitar. I we, just would just play it, and I'm just like, whatever. That's I, that's I had VHS I tapes because I'm older than you, but we, there was a live uh, Metallica sanitarium, mm-hmm. and I was just like, where is his hands for sanitarium? Yeah. And I'm like... Oh, oh, and then I hear the sound and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I've got it. And I'm then, the smartest man alive. Yeah, I felt like a genius, <laughs> yeah. dude, an absolute genius. Yeah. And then just to know the chords of that. And then because yeah. it's a pick, it's very basic picking for that. Yeah. Just the one little bit. I think just by nature, because we've skated for so long, we it's like a language that we just know. But I try almost to like avoid going down that rabbit hole with stuff like jujitsu. I don't want to, you know, 
I don't want to just be so technically think overthinking yeah. everything. Yeah, because it's a feel. I just want to just go. I just yeah. want to just roll. It's a feel for sure. Yeah. Like you feel where you are. You feel, like it's like, I don't, especially jujitsu guys with the Tenth Planet guys with their names because of Eddie Bravo. Where it's well, like, yeah. I mean, I learn the name of something and someone's like, oh no, that's this. And it's I'm called like, that. All right. Yeah. Well, well, I guess that's same in skating where if someone asks me. I mean, it's it's uh, these days it's up for debate what tricks are because yeah. everything has morphed into. Street. My favorite park. thing is what you you said one time recently was someone did what street skaters would call like a nollie, I guess a nollie three sixty, but you called it a switch caballero. I thought that was the the raddest <laughs> way to describe a nollie three sixty. <laughs> I like that. I like it the, more. But the too. funny thing is, the the actual name for that trick is a helipop. I didn't. Even oh know yeah, that. we went. See, he did that to me the other day. <laughs> Helipop, no, that guy that did the helipop no slide at X Games, and I'm like, helipop. Mm. I'm like, what oh is that? yeah, no, like no, like three sixty backside no slide. Yeah, thank you, no, like backside three sixty. <laughs> Do you guys know what how they switch named caballero method? no slide? <laughs> method no switch what switch caballero no slide? <laughs> that sounds way cooler. It does. It does sound cool. It sounds way. I would technical. rather just say that people would give you a shit. Well, definitely you'd hear from Steve Caballero if you said that, but. He's um, allowed to say it. He can say it. Everybody Switch else. Cab. He can say whatever he wants yeah, when it true. comes to cab. Yeah. Like, yeah. Remember when rollerbladers raised their hand to tell you that it was a caballero? And I'm like, dude, you can't, don't say caballerial. This is a no handed aerial, and you have your boots laced onto your feet. Uh, that doesn't make sense. The tail would be, I mean, isn't the tail the whole point of the. Going off the tail makes it like a cavalry, cab, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But I guess it would just be backwards if you're on your rollerblades, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, they would raise a hand to notify the judges. I don't know. I don't know what's or that about. they're turning the other way, you mean? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what mm. you're talking about. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So the method was, was named because uh, oh, this is when be they great. first did high air contests, yeah. um, uh, uh, Neil Blender... He's always, of course, the, the, you know, at the epicenter of naming tricks and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, Neil and Lance and stuff, they <clears throat> would grab behind the foot and arch it so that they go higher yeah. for the measuring yeah. stick. Yeah, that's the method. And they're like, because that's back then they like, did the how do you go higher? Path. And they go, you got to grab like this and, and arch it. That's the method. Of that course. It. Yeah, that makes sense. I've of never even course. thought about why it was called a method, honestly. Yeah, because it's the method to making your board go higher. Of course it is. Yeah. Genius. There you go. You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. So good. That was so I juicy. These, I these stories. My son at dinner for his birthday the other day, he's like, I'm working on this new one where I grab like down here in between the board and I go, which hand? <laughs> and he goes, the back hand. I'm like, yeah, okay, correct. If you do it with the front hand and you put your leg, you put your arm between your legs, you are a loser. That's a roast beef, And he's right? like, what are you talking about? I'm like, if you if you do front hand, you got to tuck the knee. You cannot do a mute air, sorry, a, a, a weddle with your oh, hand. Stink bug? Yeah, t no, no, no. Look, oh, you you're can teach it's your like kid. Oh, you indie stink bug. You can do indie stink bug all day. No, he's saying, but don't do it. Don't do it. Do don't do weddle. Don't do a mute. If you do weddle and it's between uh, the yeah. legs, you are a ride off. I don't know why naturally I've always reached around the knee. That just feels because you have his legs. Yeah, because you can do. You have. You have. Like I don't have good hip dexterity though. I can't squat down at all. Did, could you ever? No, not really. Were you ever envious of him because of because of the way he can? I don't think I was envious, but I thought it was cool that he could. I, was. I have all these photos. I was of so envious of that was, when he was really little. And I would just squat next to him to get at his height. Yeah. And I have these photos. I'm like, how the hell was I just doing that all the time? You yeah, know? that's what I thought about yeah, every time you ever did sitting it. Sitting in a squat, talking to Riley, and just like, I, I can't do it now. Good, no. suffer. Now you know what it's like. <laughs> I have to be on my tippy. But I don't have to anymore. If I'm like squatting down. Right. Yeah, I don't have to anymore. He's six feet yeah, tall. Yeah, I could so. never. Every time I ever whipped out trying to squat, yeah. I would immediately hate him in my head. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd be like, one. I would have made that. If I had, I think you either have it or you don't. Yeah, that's you are right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's you I think were it's, able to it's, squat though before the hips. Yeah, maybe I think it's hips and ankles. Is that that's why I can't do it because okay. both of those are not in the my toast. favor anymore. Yeah. Are you doing kickboxing or did you? Uh, I do. I'll do Muay Thai classes sometimes before I hurt my shoulder, but I want to get back to it. I was really liking Muay Thai a lot, but yeah, uh, I just like Muay Thai more just because of the, just the technique the style felt yeah nat more natural than kickboxing to me but 
I mean, they're all. It's all kind of similar, but it is pretty similar. But I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know why I just felt better doing, doing the kicks like Muay Thai style than, than kickboxing. Yeah, because it's more like kickboxing is more. It's it's punching and kicking. They're more. I about, just like kicking more than punching, so I think that's why Muay Thai feels a little more. Muay Thai is more technique. Like Muay Thai is yeah. like you can. There's a kick where people do it. Some people do it and they hit you and you go, you don't know. You go, oh, that's pretty good. And then your leg doesn't move and you're like, what? What did you just do? Yeah. Like they they hit something different yeah. that stops your leg from working instantly. Muay Thai is just brutal. Right? Yeah, it's just like. It's just harsh. Some guys yeah, do a kick you know. where they know where there's a there's a part of your like meat. A funny bone. Yeah, like the meat is, they move the meat out of the way. I also noticed this, real good guys from conditioning their shins have made their muscle move out of the way so their bone is sticking out of the front of their leg. That's one thing those skaters kind of have an advantage of is yeah. our bones, our shins are already destroyed. I've noticed that which, when you check kicks, you're supposed to, like you use your shin to check the kick. Yeah. And people that have only been doing Muay Thai for a couple of years, if they check, it still hurts. Ne it never hurt me. Yeah, because I can whip this shin around and yeah. I don't even feel it, yeah, honestly. It's numb. Yeah. yeah, it really is numb. Same with tattoos. People are like, man, the shin and the knees hurt. And I was like, I bet your mind I like don't. How, I like how we're saying it's an advantage to have. It, it is, is though. Shins. Yeah, it really no, is. I mean, mine, mine, if, if I hit mine, I have no idea how much damage it did until I look at it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's you're, good. You're blessed. <laughs> yeah. No, I hate it. <laughs> well, because the most people have but never also felt get, a shinner. We, like, that's what right, we Right, but also getting. mine's paper thin, so if you just brush yeah. it, it's like, oh, yeah, great. Yeah, you do nice bleed a lot. Yeah, long. that one, I don't have that issue for some reason. Shiny. Just where it, like, yeah, just your shins. Yeah. yeah your shins Dude, are hideous. One. But also... That's from snowboarding. That's from my boot rubbing. Oh, gnarly. And yeah. then I just, it just rubs away. I mean, that, I'm going to vomit. Your leg is disgusting, dude. Tan that thing or something. Jeez. Man. That thing That's is why like... I'd rather get all the tattoos to hide all the, the yeah. scars. Yours don't skating. look like that, right? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You haven't looked at your shit? <laughs> no, I'm saying I just don't know if they yeah, look. Yeah, you don't have it. Yeah, see? He's yeah. Yeah, you look... <laughs> those, are, those are legs of a... Since of a... I hurt my shoulder, I've been with Milford. We've been doing full leg sleeves, and it's been torturous, but... I wanted to do it when I was hurt because I knew I'd never do it otherwise. Yeah. But it really Because it takes so long? Just because yeah. you just can't, it like, it really hurts. Like, we did most of my, most of down here yesterday, and it, it's oh, dang. Like, it oh. really hurts. Yeah, his buddy Milford. Dang, homie, you're catching talented. up. Yeah. I gotta get in there. But, Keep oh my God, ahead. on the butt, it was the worst spot I've ever felt. Try butthole. Yeah, I can't, oh, I don't want to. It's another level. Yeah. What? This is what I get. It's what around it you have a tattoo or something? Yeah, I have the whole thing tattooed. That's what I get. The for butt what do you was mean? with him and bringing my son into the show. The butt it's, is what no tattoo joke. Talk? Though. You got to take it all into like it's gross or yeah, something. The it's butt, a part of the anatomy. Get the over butt it. Hurts really bad. It wasn't. I got a stick and poke first, and then the stick and poke was so bad that covered I wanted it. to get it, yeah get it yeah. covered, and then yeah it was it's the top of your head's worse than your butthole. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Words to live by. Yeah, remember that, kids. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to get your head tattooed? I don't think so. Fair enough. I thought I was maybe going to lose my hair sooner, but it seems like it's still here. Oh, hell, so. I, shut up. I remember I hate you. you. I remember How dare you expose <laughs> that hair <laughs> My mind might be going bald. I, 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 I shaved it because I was like, I just, I thought <laughs> I was. What are you talking about? I have a funny Like when that. it was really long, I was like, I think, I don't know. I thought it was starting to go out, so I was like, I don't want to be the guy with the. The crazy wispy like long hair. Yeah, and then it once I shaved it, it just started coming back naturally more because I was like, it could I don't know it was starting to be taken care of again I guess because I just it was just get dready and just like okay maybe that but you are not going bold dude I, trust me for you know, a second you know, I thought it, there's some there's some theory or folklore that it's your it's your mom's dad yeah you pattern after yeah and I'll never forget one time he's like. Wait, so I'd have hair like, and his grandpa was there, and his grandpa's bald. He's like, oh, no. So I'd have hair like grandpa? Yeah. Daryl? Yeah. 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 Well, that's another reason and why then I was he like, was, oh, yeah. He just started laughing. He's like, I'm going to get it. Get but it. I think if I have, I have it, this 31, yeah, it's I still think, there. I, yeah. I think okay. I'm good. Yeah, you'd have to show. It'll thin, I'm sure, but. Yeah, it'll thin when you're when you're older than him, which means who cares because your head's riddled anyway. As long as your hair stays Well, I think at a certain face, point, people expect you're going to have thin hair, right? It's just. That's kind of... Yeah, when you're really old. Like, way older than us. 
seems like I have a lot of homies though. Like Shay, he he lost his hair really young. I don't know, just genetic, I guess. He's yeah, those are that's because he's an evil person. He's stressed. He's a stressed God, person. What? God hates them. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's a stressed. He's a those stressed are, person. Those are not words to live by. No, no. This is just. But no, joke. I don't think I would ever go head or neck. I don't know. Right. That yeah. was the, that was my only response to him actually when he oh sh- yeah sent me his the picture of his tattoo his first one okay so there was said, don't do your neck right but I think that was like almost no offense, a, bro. that was like a no. different I feel like As back I'm then tattoos the still each to their own you know <laughs> they still had a different stipulation back then I feel like even it's just I feel like it's so much more normal now to have just yeah, yeah. full just everything I see when you there was a time there where they were called job stoppers yeah the yeah. hands and, and getting yeah. tattoos and not having a job is pretty dumb like I get that angle, but yeah. now you know, yeah, like people work in retail and restaurants, and we well, see you know people I mean? now with like face and no anywhere else. Well, like, those are the things the... that I, because I feel like when you get your first tattoos, they're the worst ones. Yeah, and if you get your worst ones on your neck and on your hands, bit, then yeah. that's like that sucks. You know, like I got some jank on me, but sure. those those are my first ones that are like where my legs are. I never <laughs> got. Riley's legs are his his uh, sketchboard. Yeah. Did you do them yourself? <laughs> yeah, I've done some on my thighs. Yeah, yeah, that's I know those guys. <laughs> I hit up Olivia though actually recently to. Have oh her yeah, do she one. said that. She she's, did. Yeah. She's really good. She's awesome. She did that chain link. I can't believe how good she the got. Day, so quick. Right? She's awesome. The Underhill. Yeah. Her style is sick. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. She's in L.A. Hit her up. Yeah. I felt bad for her. I went to Miles' shop to to like hang out and support Miles, and then when I get there, everybody's lit. You know what I mean? They're all like. 20 yep. and it's just a bunch of vaping kooks and I'm just like oh my god like I really love you Miles I'll hang out and then I see her in the corner tattooing people like this is my way to not have to well I was like if I get a tattoo she was like do you want to get a tattoo and I was like yeah I'll get a tattoo so now I think she wants me to get a tattoo because then I'll post it and yep. she'd be stoked to tattoo me and I'm like I'd be stoked if you tattoo me so this works but she's there's a line of vaping kooks that are Getting tattoos, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to be here for like another hour before I get tattooed. But I was like, stay. Did you go to the shop then, or you did it there? Oh yeah, no, I hung out, dude. I was that's like right Miles, in the middle of it. Miles has only good tattoos. I'm like, you need to get some shitty ones. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, all his are yeah. Yeah. very curated. so curated yeah. and perfect. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. damn it, by all the top <laughs> top artists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, kook of the week, man. Like, <laughs> you got to get some jank. Like, come over to my house. And I just feel like, like if you do ha- if you don't have a couple bad ones, there's something off. Miles, yeah. has, like, Miles, Riley did one of Miles. I did do one. That's probably his worst one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> probably. <laughs> definitely his worst one. It's definitely his worst yeah. one. Yeah, I know. All his ta- Every time he shows me a tattoo, I go, oh, man, that's sick. It's like really, really good. Yeah, like you're a kook, you know? It's true. Like, I don't want to get, because there's guys now that are really good. I don't yeah. want to get their tattoos, because it'll make all my other tattoos look even worse than they are. Yeah, you got to, like, match the, yeah, the I gotta, aesthetic going. This going. is the thing. Like, that's why it's, like, getting laser. Like, my friend said, hey, man, do you want to get... Uh, laser and I was like no and he's like come on man like it'll they, they got a van it comes to your house and they laser it off and I could tell that it's his friend and it's publicity for his friend yeah to tell people that you can get laser and that's cool if you I, don't like, like your tattoos nightmare. I just don't care yeah. like if I have a bad <laughs> tattoo I'll get a bigger crappier over one over it. the top exactly, of it exactly yeah like problem solved yeah but I I did it the other day and it's like you go, but you have to go, and you have to go, and you have to go so many times. And it doesn't really it... even work, right? No, right? Uh, it yeah. works. But yeah. did you go how many but, times? But you like a, you had, had a go, tiny I one, had to go right? About eight times. Okay. That's... But for like a tiny one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you have like, if you're trying to get this, like there's no way. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. a guy, it was a movie or a documentary about a guy that was, you know, into drugs and a really crazy life and was, yep. I think he was in racist gangs or something and he had like crazy face yeah. tattoos that were really inappropriate and then they showed a, an after because it showed that he when he got better and fixed himself and you know wouldn't change his ways they were lasering this off and it was like really thick black stuff yeah and they showed an actual photo of him and it was gone really and oh. I was like man that must have been a lot Painful. of sessions. Because, Re- yeah, I had it on my toe, and I was like, ooh, that's... I wouldn't want 
eight hours of that. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I feel like yeah, he no, had that. I mean, painful. just getting tattooed now hurts more than I remember it when I was younger, for sure. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> there just, is a, it starts hurting way more. There is an age where like, you go, I know, right? Hell, this where it's sucks. like it starts and you're like, because I've been, like, I'm covered, so... For me to flinch a tattoo is not a good idea. Yeah. From I won't do it, yeah. and I won't get any numbing stuff because I'm old school. Yeah, but it's there's been ones before where it starts, and I'm like, man, how, how many hours is this gonna go for? Yeah. And I, but I don't say it; I just think it in my head for sure. It's but I found a new guy who's like, he's gentle. There you go. Yeah, Milford is not. I don't want to say got a heavy it, hand. He's old it doesn't school. hurt. Yeah. Milford goes. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think he would change his ways no, for he's your very comfort. No, they don't. Yeah, traditional jitsu. guys. But, no, hurt. his homie. He's he's hilarious. Yeah, he's super funny, dude. He's like he's an old vert skater. He's like Forrest Gump meets Spicoli. <laughs> nice. Yeah. He's, he's been in every prime situation. Every he was just, when we were working on my legs last time, he was saying that we were watching some tattoo show, and it was some famous <laughs> tattoo artist talking about some era, and he was like. He's like, I literally feel like Forrest Gump. He's like, I was working at that shop, but he, during that time, he's yeah. talking about. It. And I he, remember seeing him and, coming and, and going. built some of the first half pipes and stuff like that. His, Wait, his ramp, he? they brought his ramp from his house to the skate park of Tampa, and that was his ramp. Wait, the Tampa ramp was yeah, it was the, the one, ha- one that was at his house. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that ramp was sick. I know. Yeah, that's where I did kickflip. No, remember uh, I was telling you that he yeah you he uh, he was telling me when he was doing a contest. He was on. Oh, I think it was. GNS or something. Oh, and, with my dad. And someone didn't show up, yeah. and he he <laughs> entered as them because he wrote for GNS too. And uh, my grandpa knew knew who the guy was, and so when Milford was on the deck, he's like, "No, no, like you're not so and so." My dad knew the, who the guy missing. Yeah, was. yeah, yeah. And he's him. like, "No, no." And Milford was like, "Fuck you!" And he like said he dropped in <laughs> and tried to do this Texas plan and just hung up and no- and like got knocked out. And he said he was like, "I'll never forget." He was like, "That was the funniest." The dumbest thing. I like I've the ever idea done. that my dad would be pissed at him too. Like, uh, yeah, this asshole. Yeah, now I got knocked out. And now you're knocked out. Like, yeah. my responsibility. <laughs> and he said too, he's like, man, I was ripping that day. Like, I thought he's like, this is my day. Like, things are gonna turn around after today <laughs> <laughs> to steal someone's identity. Yeah, because he was like, I was skating good, and like, I was in the contest finally. And he was just like, yeah, he said it was <laughs> That's not so funny. not how he thought it was gonna go. Man, that kind of happened to me on Monday when Reese was ripping, and I was like, whatever, because yeah. it was like a couple of rides in. I was like. I know you can't do this trick and this trick and this trick. And I was like, try this. And then you can't try that. And then all of a sudden, Tony's talking to me on the couch. Like, where am I? And what am I here to do? And I was like, that, oh, yeah. no. That was brutal. I watched the video and I was like, I can't believe that there was even question of doing the podcast after <laughs> once I saw the video. Well, you know how it goes, dude. Like, when you're in you my never, mindset, yeah, like, yeah, I came yeah. down here. You we don't got know a show to do. I'm yeah. doing oh, it. Yeah, well, just so everyone knows the context of that story. We were supposed to record this a couple days ago. And uh, Jason Oops. was skating before we were going to record, and he got KO'd, which was, has been out there. Everyone has probably seen it. I yeah, I posted it. Yeah. Um, but then he still wanted to do the show. Riley was going to be here. But I live so close that it was it didn't yeah, even matter. Like, yeah. It was like... And trying to convince you of that was next to impossible. Yeah? Yeah. Like, no, Riley can come another day. He lives here. It's. Okay. I mean, I've been around. <laughs> yeah, my we homies when. People get KO'd, they just get stuck. You get stuck in that loop of like, no, it's all good. Man. And I don't want to let anybody down, you know? Like, I'm yeah. going to say I'm going to do something. I'm no, going to do it, you know? It was, I, was re- just, I was just hoping you are okay because I was yeah. like, oh, that's Thanks, terrible. Dude. Hey, I'm okay. Well, I skated today and did the trick that I got knocked out on, so. Conquered it. <laughs> you yeah. skateboarding. but That's why I'm going to Mammoth this month so I can say fuck you to the... Yeah. Box. yeah, yeah. Are you gonna go ride, ride that no, same box? No, I'm not going on the box. I just need to. <laughs> I just need to turn. I just need to get on the mountain and turn. That's why. I, that's why I, sk- I was like, I'm not gonna skate for long, but I'm gonna skate because, you know, I, I, people were like, man, at your age, maybe it's maybe you thought about quitting, and I'm like, no. I'm like, man, I quit drugs and alcohol. Like, I quit every, all these things, and now you tell me no, no skateboarding. Like, yeah. there's there's a line, you know. Yeah. And that that one is not. I just started to love it again i'm not yeah you're not taking that away from me i don't care how many times my head bounces off the ground i'm not yeah. doing it yeah when i was skating i grabbed my helmet and i was like oh what's that thing right there and then i took my helmet off Crack. and the padding is Crack cracked like open it. as it should yeah. be it, it but saved I your life yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's when you know it worked right yeah. when it yeah. cracks yes, like that absolutely yeah yeah well then cool that's a good helmet because i feel great <laughs> i'm gonna go find you a new one yeah um 
Okay, well, Riley's here, so we have to we have to take advantage of, of him being here with uh, kids' stories. Yeah. I am curious, was there ever a time where you felt like, oh, I, I'm good at this skateboarding. Like, I'm, I'm actually can do the things that I set out to do in it. Um, I don't think there was ever an m- exact time when I realized that. I think just because, too, like, I was around so many other kids that were good at it, too. It just felt like that was just, like, a thing you did. I don't know. I have a lot of friends that have moved here from other places, and they always call it, like, the SoCal kid thing. They're like, you f- guys are fucking good at everything, like, skating, surfing, whatever it is. Like, you just, I just grew up around people that were doing it, too, so I think it just felt like everyone mm-hmm. kind of was good at it. But then there was definitely, I think, a time when maybe we were filming, like, the Shep Dogs videos where we were all starting to really push ourselves, and maybe that was kind of when I was more set on like progressing as a street skater and filming video parts. I remember having a conversation with you and it was like, Riley, it's not, you're not just good for your age. Like you're really good at this. And did it, was and he surprised when you were telling him that or did he not? No, I don't think so. But I, he was talking about getting pretty serious into motocross. Yeah. That was at like that, that time. time when I really liked and riding. Yeah. We, it was going to be really hard for his mom and I to, to support that because yeah. it was at that point it was my mom's ex-husband mike who was knew about it and was taking me and then he kind of wasn't around anymore and then it was you know how moto is if you don't know anything about it like it would be hard for my dad to load up the bikes and get me out yeah i mean oh, man we, i'd like to watch that <laughs> i did go a couple times i spent i spent a couple days at the track but moto is such like a I, family commitment yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. like so i go gnarly. get in and out for everyone yeah come back okay here we go yeah. just sitting in the dirt all day <laughs> yeah. and i was like it was more like this is not sustainable oh, that's so much fun and i felt bad well it's yeah. more like i felt bad because i was like we I can't support you in this yeah. and i know you want to take it seriously yeah and i go but but i just you know, I have to tell you that you are seriously good at skateboarding. Yeah. Um, I just think I just liked it so much. That's why I... Yeah. I think I just like doing both, so yeah. I didn't think too much about it, but... But, but I remember you love we it. went to... You um, love it. We went to England for the audio tour, audio shoes tour. Yeah. Um, who was it, like, Jamie Thomas, Jeremy Ray, everyone? Yeah, Bam. Oh, that was, yeah. like, the, the and, uh, big crew. We went to one of the, the indoor skate park. One of the first demos we did, I'll never forget. Jeff is Taylor. The, is it the PlayStation the, Park? It was. It was after that. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it, I can't. Whatever one of the first parks we went to, I, yep. I think it might have been in Manchester. It might have been PlayStation. And Jeff Taylor hadn't seen Riley skate in a while. Yeah. And uh, and you know he was there to video and stuff, but he was a pro skater. Yeah. And then I remember he saw Riley do something over this ledge, and he's like, "That's it. Riley's better than me." <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that moment thinking like yeah he is that good but but there's so there was always this thing where it's like well he, you know he's pretty good for his age or he's your kid and yeah and then it was like no he's really good yeah yeah I don't know when there was I don't know when the I mean I don't think you would have felt that moment shift but yeah I, well definitely when Andrew asked you to be on the team yeah I mean I think before that, that though right I think at that point I knew I just knew that me and like Kirby and Rowan and Taylor Smith and everyone were skating. Like we were skating at a level that was far more advanced than what our age was. Like we were, we were just, we were like in it. We were just really doing it like street skating all the time. Everyone was pushing each other and everyone was so good that I guess we didn't realize how, that you guys were on a different level of yeah. people your age. But I think that around that time I knew, I just knew I could film a video part that was worthy to to be in a Baker video. I didn't know if it was going to be received that way by people watching it, but I just mm-hmm. felt, I didn't feel like I didn't belong on the team, if that makes sense. When did you want to oh. be a pro skateboarder? I don't know, probably not till... Probably not till like maybe fifteen or sixteen. I feel like really because I was still just liking doing everything. I was surfing all the time. I was really into motocross. And when Andrew obviously approached you, and then you yeah. told me that's what you wanted to do. Yeah, and I was all for it because I felt like that's finally some validation. That's not just 
because he's mm -hmm. under my watch or shadow yeah. or whatever, that that Andrew is not going to pick someone for nepotism. Right. Right. And Andy's definitely, you know, he's, he's known for having an eye for talent. So that is probably a big boost for your confidence as well. Mm. Um, but would you have felt like if you, let's just say that didn't happen, you arrived at Birdhouse and there was a Birdhouse Riley Hawk model, would you have felt like that was just more forced? Mm, no, not really. I don't think I would have felt like it was forced. I just think that, I guess I didn't really fully understand like where I sat in regards to being a pro, but I think after the, that Baker video that first came out that I was in, I didn't, I didn't expect people to like receive it the way they did. And mm -hmm. a lot of people were like, that was, you know, the best part in the video, this and that, or people just were just, I think I really pushed myself for that one. And so after that happened, I just figured if I just stay, maybe just try to just stay on this trajectory, it'll, you know, you, I think, you know, when you're on the right path, you just have to keep, going mm -hmm. that way seems like it took you a long time to realize the potential you had like do you think it's because you're always around all of us and you're on demo you're already you've been good for so long that you it got you got used to it before you even turned pro i don't yeah i think maybe it's just it was just so a part of my life that right there wasn't really a time up until that point you know when i was like 16 17 18 that i really just w kind of put everything mentally focused into skating. Whereas right. before it was, I wanted to do, ev I just wanted to have, like, I didn't want to miss out on any, I wanted to do everything everyone was doing, you know? Yeah. If people were going surfing, I wanted to go surf. If people were doing this, I want, and I'm glad I did that because now growing up, I have so much common ground with so many people that I meet in my life where right. I can, I can go and do something and, you know, it's not like it's going to be my first day. Yeah. out there every single time someone wants to go do something. So I'm, I definitely am grateful that I did that because I think a lot of people like, you know, David and Figgy and all those guys were, they were way ahead of their age group as far as skill level. Like yeah. they were, they were all in on skating, even when they were 13, yeah, 13, 14, 15, they were, that was it. And so I think I just didn't really double down until I was maybe a little later than, than they were. On he, it does he seem definitely, like. he definitely would take interest in things and go all in on finding out about it. Right. I just um, think I didn't care that <clears throat> I didn't care about feeling like I only had like anything that wasn't skating was lame. I was just like, I would liked motocross and then I would get super stoked on surfing and just but but you surf. like I mean I, I, what I'm trying to say is you like motocross but then you would build a motorcycle. That's a different yeah. level of interest. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to just be... I think it's like anyone, when you get stoked on skating, you want to, you know, learn everything there is to know about Wait, it. Wait, you and, built a motorcycle? Well, I would... I didn't build a dirt bike, but I have friends that we've built motorcycles like Harleys and stuff. Yeah. But, but really got into how it works. But you know how to and, build it. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't build it myself, but I've... With my friends, we've done it. <laughs> so yeah. We've done it to where that's, it runs. That's a sure. lot. But... So when you got good, when you were like, okay, now I'm on a team, I'm pro, I I see my future. Was it was it a different attitude from then on? Because it seems like you've been pretty casual about. I think your skateboard I almost career. like I feel like I almost kind of. It was hard because right when I turned pro is the almost the start of just this super drawn out couple years of ankle injuries and i just never really got to like get the ball rolling i felt like and Do you think I the injuries was, happened because you started to get you started to go too hard because you realized it was, i just think it was just i mean yeah i was trying stuff that i remember distinctly the first time i really hurt my right ankle i was at black box in carlsbad and i was learning how to do I was trying to learn how to do a 360 flip Smith down the handrail because I wanted to do it on this rail. Yeah. And I was like, this is kind of, I've never done like a trick like this down a handrail. Yeah. And I was getting really close. And then one time I just didn't get in. I got into a 50, 50 and I slipped out and I just kind of sat back on my ankle and I was like, Whoa, something bad just happened. 
And it was just because I was, like you said, I think I was just pushing myself. Because you were pushing it. Yeah, I was just really pushing it. And then it was just kind of unlucky that I just kept, it just kept happening. Like right. it just, once it happened once, it was just prone. And then it just kept from there, just snowballed kind of. Do you think you've ever had a window where you weren't hurt and you were completely focused? Uh, I mean, like the last few years, I think has been the the first time I felt like really just healthy and f- focused mentally. I think I was mentally not so focused in my early to mid twenties just because of injuries and then just yeah. you know just like life happening and yeah going down other avenues, wanting to do stuff like music and stuff like that. So makes sense. Yeah. So now you would say that you're more focused on skateboarding than ever. I think now I just, injury wise, I think now I just see it more like it is actually, it is something that I have. It's like a job that I have to really put everything I have into my mental and physical to be able to do it the way I want to. And, you know, when you're younger, it just comes easy and it's just like fun. And then all of a sudden one day it just stops happening like that. Yep. And you kind of get stuck in this weird moment where you're like, what the fuck? I can't, I can't do these things I want to do. And I don't understand why it's not working. And then it takes some time to learn that it, you know, it all has to do with your lifestyle and mental and kind of like. He made a big shift in, in terms of his lifestyle and his approach. And it sounds like it. Eating well, healthy, not drinking. Yeah, like yeah, he, I think he I really just figured it out. I saw, <laughs> I just saw that it was not where it was heading I was that was not going to be somewhere that I could do the things I want right. to do you know so tried to shift it and luckily I think I caught it early enough to where I still have some some time to skate at a level that I want to and then obviously I think you know there's always a time when you have to just pull back cuz cuz it's just the reality of yeah of your physicality and your, but not your yet. body no not yet I think not I got at a, all I think I got some time before I'm ready to consciously look at a spot and be like, oh, yeah, no, it's just not worth it, you know? So does that mean you have big plans for the near future? I'm just skating and filming and just trying to just do stuff that I'm stoked on and not, you know, I'm just trying to not half-ass any anything when I'm out filming. I want to do things that I have specific tricks that I want to do and film, and I think that's just how it is now. I think people, it's much more... Skating is so much more like thought out and methodical nowadays when vi- with video parts and you see these people that have these epic video parts, you can, you just know watching it how much work went into it and how much thought and all that stuff. So and that's what you're working on. I'm trying to, I mean, yeah, that's the shoulder was a little bit of a setback, which was a bummer cause I wasn't even skating, but that, yep. you know, I, I was telling a couple of buddies, it's just like I was due one somewhere cause I was just getting away with too much all at once. You can't. <laughs> You can't be doing everything like that and expect nothing to happen. So, yeah. So now you would be, if you're doing other sports, you would be like, let's let's enjoy ourselves. It checked me a little for sure, right. especially snowboarding. I was like, okay, I need to just pull back because it was. I know I can push myself there, but it's not worth it right now when no. I have these goals that I want to do skating. So it's I'm, a window that you have. I'm in that window right now. So right. I'm, you know, when this is better, I'm really trying to focus on just put it all on the line for skating versus like, you know, divvy it out throughout a bunch of different things. So, I mean, when you think about it, if you're doing all these other things, you always have been doing all these other things while being a a very successful pro skateboarder. Imagine if you channeled it all into just your skateboard part, like what it's going to look like. I just, I try to not make it feel so overbearing in that way. I don't want it to feel you know, like it's taking too much of a mental toll, but I think that you need some of that, some of that push to where you go to a place mentally you don't really want to, but I think that's how you get the best results out of doing something you want to do. So, right. Because in the end, there's going to be that payoff where there was some grueling times and you were in a mental space where you were like, this is not the most enjoyable mental space to be in, but the payoff. There's a fine line of like when it's working too easy and then when you're putting in just that right amount of effort and struggle to where it really feels good when when things do work out. Right, when you and and in your era, like to be good now. I mean, it's so Everyone is so good. Everyone is so good, it's nuts. I mean, I think like... If I film the best video part I can possibly film, there will be people that are like, that was 
awesome. That was the best video part you've had. But then, you know, it's going to just go into this big machine of globbed internet video stuff. And that's just is what it is. Yeah. It's, just, it's not the same where it used to be, you know, there is this video and everyone knows like this guy, there's the guy right now. Yeah. And it's just that, like that does kind of happen, but not really anymore. But it's not what it's about in the, in the end, like when it's all said and done. It's not about that anymore. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've just been skating a lot with a lot of my buddies that I grew up skating with, and we've been taking the Birdhouse van, and it feels, it. I really have felt like it's that era again where we're all 16, 17, 18, and we're just having a lot of fun, but the skating is working really well because of that vibe yeah. and that energy, and we're just trying to keep right in that way like <laughs> yeah just, hold on to it man because that's a that's a sweet pocket and yeah. i think now having gone through that with like all the shep dogs videos and everything yeah i didn't we didn't realize how awesome something was that we had when we had it and now yeah. looking back in hindsight i can feel that that's how it feels right now skating with my friends so i'm just really trying to enjoy it and like take advantage and go on all these trips and yeah and do it in a way that feels fun again you know smart man yeah. so cool whether you know it or not, um, you know, all of your siblings, half siblings, um, cousin siblings, we'll get into that, but yeah, <laughs> um, I think you, you've inspired all of them with your, with your attitude, with your skating, with your eclectic interests and mm -hmm. getting good at all this stuff. And, and I see a little bit of you and all of them, yeah. um, but they're all looking towards you. So to see you, have this this sort of coming of age of mm -hmm. you know getting healthy and and having a better outlook it's really comforting for me because i know they're all looking at you yeah um because you are the oldest of all i mean riley has a lot of relatives <laughs> yeah yeah i, I know yeah. most of them but it's hard but to no, keep I, up i think it's i think that's kind of it seems like <laughs> stuff is going in that direction in society anyways, where younger people um, are starting to understand a bit more. But I think the fact more. that you you took the incentive yeah. at your age, and, I mean, now you're a responsible adult. You're you're married. Like, you're you're the self-sufficient man. And, and yeah. I think they're, they're seeing that, and they're very um, inspired by it. And also, they know that they're capable of it. Yeah. They no, see I, you do. I mean, I think not having, when you're the oldest, you don't have those people to to do what I'm doing for them. So it, right. it, Not can, at take, all. it can take a little while to no. figure that stuff out, you know? So I'm grateful that because I, I certainly I wasn't did. doing it for him. Yeah. No. But no, I, I know what you mean. It's, it's good that, that they can see, I guess someone making a conscious effort. No, it's, to do it's it. really cool. But, but like I said, I've seen them all. They all looked up to you all through their lives. And yeah, you know, I, I remember it even when they were super little, like it's Riley here, it's Riley here. But it's cool that I mean, like you said, they all have so many interests that they're all Oh, and they all they all have huge potential. Yeah, they all are very good at a lot of things and I like learning about stuff that they do from them, you know, and definitely I think Spencer and Keegan I mean everyone, they're all like very talented at the things they do and I I mean Tanner is a pro skater. Yeah. Tanner is a pro, yeah. Miles is one of the greatest executive producers of the Jason L show ever. Yeah, That's Miles true. is yeah. spazzy. Miles is one of those yeah. guys too, though. Like when it comes to MMA and stuff like that, I yeah. love pick. He he always teaches me all kind. He's so like he's such an MMA nerd. Yeah, he is. He's dialed it's in. fun to talk yeah. to him about it. Yeah, but yeah, he's awesome. Okay, you want to hear my funny Riley story that <laughs> yes, I tell please. people? <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, I have several, but um. We were in Australia. This is, you'll like this one. Yeah. He was like three and a half, maybe four. And okay. uh, I was skating Big Day Out for Airwalk. Yeah. But I was at the mercy of Airwalk's demands. So yeah. I was skating Big Day Out, doing demos in between, doing shop appearances every day. Dude. It was it was painful. So yeah. finally, like, we get to go do something fun. So we go to the zoo, and you can go sit with kangaroos, right? Yeah. So we go... And Riley, and there's a little kangaroo, and Riley's looking at it, and he's like, whoa, like, this guy's my size. Yeah. And then he squared up. And Wait, the kangaroo did? The kangaroo or? squared up and punched him and knocked him down. <laughs> you got assaulted by a kangaroo? Yeah. You remember that, right? Yeah, no, I remember. And then he comes up to me, and he's like, I was like, are you okay? He's like, we got to find his mom. 
and tell him that he's grouchy and he needs a nap. <laughs> <laughs> he got punched by a yeah. kangaroo. But what a great attitude. People don't even believe no. that story when I, I told you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Them, I, like, no. I watched, I was far enough away where I couldn't prevent it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh no. Oh, I mean, okay. in the kangaroo's defense, were you sizing him up? I don't know. I don't it sounds know. like you were. It was, it was fine. Like the kangaroo was like, oh, a person my size. Yeah. Standing up. Like. I think I just, I'm probably just like the ignorant American kid that doesn't know anything about yeah. kangaroos and just thinks I can walk Oh, up dude, to don't them, do that maybe. to yourself. It, I don't care where, if you were born in the, in the <laughs> outback, if a kangaroo, if you're a three and a kangaroo that size walks up to you, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. yeah like, hey, know. nice to meet you. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I was doing. There's no rule. There's but no the, rule. But it was what almost are, like a petting zoo vibe where they just zoo, let yeah. you just like yeah. walk up to him. But he punched you with his hands? I don't remember exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that means he likes you. Okay. It's the kick that where they don't like. That's it. when they're trying to do damage. Yeah. <laughs> he thought you what were a kangaroo. What do you remember from those those early? T- I mean, we went like I took you to Japan when you were that age too. I mean, I don't remember much, but I remember weird specific places and like demos for some reason, and that's kind of it. Not much other than that. Like I remember we were talking about it. I think in Colombia there was like a weird like indoor skate shop with like ramps in it in Japan. Oh yeah, actually I can tell that story. That you were you were younger then. I think you were maybe just three. That one almost feels like it's one of those like dream memories yeah. where I don't even know if it's real. So, but you have confirmed that it is. There was real. a there was a skate distributor and skate shop in Did you Japan. Fight a panda bear. What's yeah. that? Did he fight a panda he bear? Didn't, a no, koala. but but the skate shop was paying me to put stickers on my board every month. I had like sponsors were dwindling. Yeah, right? this is ninety four ish. Yep, and I wasn't making much money, and and they were paying me a, a monthly salary just to put a, a sticker of their shop, of their shop in Japan. Like, okay, p- to promote it, and I was Sweet. like, yeah, sure, and they, we want you to come do demos. What do you mean? Well, we're gonna put up, we're gonna put up some ramps in the shop. And I go, well, I don't, I don't have childcare. And Riley's mom is works, and and they're like, just bring him. Go, if I bring him, someone has to like sit with him while I skate. Yeah, he's little. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, we can do it, no problem. You went to Japan with a three year old. Yeah, and then Man. so and so I told Riley like, we're here every day. You can pick out one toy every day. You know, if, but but you have to sit quietly while I skate. <laughs> and and he would sit on top of this jump ramp. Or like a quarter pipe. They were was probably, small. It was probably four feet wide. Yeah. And like the ramps three were feet small though. Hall. And yeah. so he would sit there and play with his Power Rangers on yeah. the deck. But they yeah. had those like rad pipe. Japanese like anime. Oh Power yeah, I mean it was super guys. fun. Yeah, it was. It, and then all and the then, toys were super cool. I remember. They finally have one one person like it, the first few demos I did. It was just like just sit here for half hour, please, and then. He would like try to get my attention while I'm skating. Yeah. Like, well, I'm like, yep, that's cool. It's all right. It, it was hard. But then they finally, there was someone that worked at the shop that was down with kids and he played with you. And then at some point, you preferred his company to, to mine when we were there because he was like, <laughs> where's that guy? There was, he liked doing the thing. Yeah, he did the Power skate, Rangers. He played the Power Rangers. Rangers. Got yeah, the yeah. Rangers. Yeah. 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 That was. But it's funny. Like, I would, I wondered if you would remember those things and. I do remember that one more specifically. And then there I was remember one there time, was some other demo that was like outdoor with like a launch ramp. And I think it was on that trip, maybe. It's possible, yeah. I on that same that. one, they were trying to get us to do three demos a day in the shop. Mm-hmm. And it was just exhausting. And then this one day, like we did a second demo. I think it was almost closing time. There was no one there. Riley and I went back to the hotel. He fell asleep. And they called me in the room of the hotel, and they're like, "You have to come back for the last demo." And I'm like, "No, I don't. No one is you." <laughs> like, "Yeah, it's you, you, this is the contract that you the contract." Dude. And so I had to pick up Riley. That's always how it is asleep, over there, though. Put him in a cab. Dude. And and put him, lay him down like somewhere in the shop, asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Do this fucking demo for like 15 people. Oh. My that was God. where I was like, "All right, this is the this is like the lowest point of." Yeah. my pro career as a father. Yeah. I think that's why I'm so easily able to go with the flow when I that's travel, true. though, because yes. I don't give a shit about what we're doing. <laughs> and honestly. he will sleep anywhere. See, yeah. I got a question. when, Because you're always around Tony when people go, holy shit, Tony Hawk. Mm-hmm. And you've had that since you were little. Like, I feel like for, it doesn't happen as much as 
as him, but it did to me. But I've had people when my kids were little go, holy shit, you're Jason Ellis. And I've seen my son go, what? Like, <laughs> who cares? It's dad. Yeah. And then, and then the dynamic of move, move kid. I want to take a photo with this guy. And I'm like, Hey man, that's my son. Like, no, he'll, like, I don't think anything like that has ever happened. No, but that's on the qu- the question is like, do you, have you ever like, does it ever get weird to you? Or are you so used to it? Like now people, I think know- one thing that like you kind of instilled in me when I was young is how important those moments are to people, even if you don't realize it. And I think that kind of changed my perspective of allowing someone to have that moment because Wow. That's something that they don't, you know, maybe ever get again in their lifetime where they see this person yeah. that they really yeah. look up to or, and it instilled also, you would explain, you know, when you give these people that time of day and you let them have this conversation for a second, it goes so much farther to them than you would ever imagine if you are a dick or whatever the situation is, That's then they, they know. definitely are going to remember I, that. Oh, it's because I had those experiences. With yeah, Rose. but I think it just, it made me think differently about those moments, how it's super important to them and yeah. it's okay to just let them have that. I mean, there are times when, you know, a conversation is getting dragged on and someone yep. has to maybe save you from it, but... Yeah, because he can't save bar. himself because then he's a dick. I'm the same way, though. I get just, I'll just sit there and just take it and is that are you people, approachable yeah, i'm not trying to curse person. you when you're in public right now but no I mean, when yeah, people I'm, see well because of that reason i just if but it's someone not, comes and, and, up to me well, the way he explains it, it it's not forced he's genuinely i'm not for, trying to be nice at him yeah just so i don't look like a dick to people but yeah he's he's gen, he has a genuine moments and conversation right but we both have a i think we both have a really good way of ending interactions that are you know, if people are drunk or if it's excessive, yeah. There's, there's, e- there, there are subtle ways of, I can't. It's hard to explain. Yeah, it's show me. There's other ways of having closure to a conversation. Yeah, You're like cool, good to see you. All right. Yeah, oh, yeah, I've seen you do that. Or yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, I gotta go. Or I don't know. But you can find yeah. a, you can find an end point. All right. Yeah, but then it's there are forced. sometimes genuine conversations that I'll have with someone that come up to me where they know a certain person that I know and there is something that sure an interesting point to talk about but there are times when you know it I don't know there's people that can just ramble about stuff forever and someone has to kind of end the conversation otherwise you just get stuck there forever but right but Kathy's uh, gonna save me from those yeah I could see that <laughs> yeah but I think just like you were like we were saying just being more, I guess, understanding of how important yeah, a moment yeah, yeah, is yeah. to someone makes no, you, you get it. just it, yeah. see differently. I mean, a lot. Most of the time, it's obviously with him. So, if I'm with him or we're with the family, everyone like the family will just keep kind of talking to ourselves amongst ourselves and let him have the moment. I feel like a lot of people are pretty good about understanding. Like, I just have this, you know, whatever time, thirty seconds, real quick to say what's up, say I'm a fan, and get a photo, and then kind of. Yeah, I think it's Carry more of what, just because I'm older, and so there's there are grown ass adults that are right. They you know, they they, have they catch on, right. they get, yeah, for sure. Um, but I I I see you, I see you maneuver through the situations um, with grace, and and I think it's it's really cool. She learned from him, yeah, for sure. Well, right. yeah, but there it's not just learn. It, it is. It is the will, the, the, it's Definitely like you'll try, you, you're, you're willing to try. We're both patient people when it comes yeah. to that type of interaction. Sure. That's for sure. But I, th- like, I think you're, you're willing to put in the, the effort too. And that says a lot. Yeah. If you're willing to like are, at yeah. least put in a little effort to meet them halfway, mm. it, it feels a little more, I guess, like an interaction than just this like chore you have to you're do. You're making me feel bad. <laughs> I feel like I'm a dick sometimes, but I get I get no, where it can super stoked when people recognize. I get where mm, it can be I'm times that it moody. feels you know it can feel sort of forced or harsh sometimes for sure. I just it's I get a weird one if someone is I feel like lying. So I can tell you. You can tell I, when I'm someone like, has a weird intention. I feel like yeah, pretty quick. And that one, well, I, yeah, that I, one, I, I wish I could handle more like you two, where I, I feel like instead I'm like, oh yeah. 
Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's like, hey, man, like, remember me? And I'm like, no. And they're like, what do you mean you don't remember me? Yeah. I'm like, I don't remember you. Like, first of all, I barely know who I am. Yeah. But like, uh, and, and have we met? No, but I've DM'd you on Instagram. And I'm like, well, that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. But I should be like, oh, cool. I should be like, hey, man, that's cool. Hey, right hey. On. <laughs> yeah. And do a Tony instead of, because I. And that's, that's me. I puff up. Hey, hey. I think you just, I don't <laughs> hey, know. Hey, I feel like if you. You just let them have the win. It will save you a lot of mental. Yeah, because <laughs> but, but Riley grew up <laughs> mental time. You know, he grew stress. up. He had to have a, a built-in sort of BS detector because he'd go to school. People knew his last name. Right. There was a lot of that. So I feel like you 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 developed that way of of knowing what the intentions are. And now, I mean, with you and Francis, that makes it extra hard. Yeah, you but you have know. that detector, so you kind of know. That's true. Yes, absolutely. Bef- like when yeah. a conversation starts, you know that the person's yeah. intentions are you can not. Tell when someone has is just has like a weird energy, and you can tell that the yeah. conversation is going to go in a way that isn't going to yeah. end well for anyone. You know, like and how do you handle that? Like the same way. I, I mean, I don't know. I guess situational. Like it would just if they were. That's the thing. I just don't think any anyone, no one really says anything too, like, disrespectful or outlandish in person. It's always, you know, online you're going to get all that type of stuff. Right, but in person you don't really ever get it. And if that was the case, then I guess it's just situational, you know, whatever. Is that what pulled you off of social media? Uh, I think it was just the same thing, like the music stuff. I just thought it just wasn't, I just felt like it had run its course in my life and it wasn't fun in any way and why bother if it felt forced or weird you know so that was kind of the main main reason i guess but now you came back to it now i am back yeah because of i mean pretty much sponsorship (laughs) obligations to put it in simpler terms but yeah i mean i think i feel like i'm at a point in my life where it just feels more like a uh avenue of the the job of being a pro skater versus mm-hmm. this thing that has to be personal to me i guess so yeah i mean it never and you're not obligated to share your personal totally that's so. what i think I, I well i think i think the internet and instagram and everything changed so fast from the course of getting it to when i got off it like i just i don't think anyone understood what it was turning into mm-hmm. and i think i at one point realized that it wasn't something that i wanted to have so much of a um like microscope into my actual yeah, personal yeah. life with. So, do you think that's got something to do with be your childhood and all the things that you've seen and the way people react around you and your father? That you being on social media, not wanting to expose your personal life, is like I feel like you guys have seen enough. I I just think I just don't care too much to share it with anyone that doesn't. Um, have some sort of like importance in my personal life, I guess, you know, like I just don't care to share things with people that I don't really know and not because I don't care what they think. It's It's just really healthy personal. Yeah, no, it's it's very like what you're doing is, but I, but I do think that, that seeing you come back to it and, and you know, you can share skate clips and, and whatever else, like your shoes and things. Yeah. So you got a new shoe. Your approach. Yeah. Yeah. We just some new colors of, uh, this like mid, shoe that we did which is cool yeah what's your I, shoe what's your shoe company look high yeah and you got a new you got a bunch of new i colors? have had th- this is the third one and we just did a high top version of it so okay but yeah i mean i i completely said high top for your sake because we skateboard yeah well i'm not supposed to know what? no he just he just like you know he's, he's 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 doing a high top version oh yeah. so i can wear it so yes exactly. yeah you could yeah i i can wear a low top I mean, sorry, a, a low... Why? we got to keep it real, Jason. Revert skaters. I do need them. My ankles yeah. melt uh, off. Thank you. Appreciate I that. I get where, you know, companies, from a company standpoint, it, it makes sense to have this person that you're investing this I, I, time and money into to have be able to promote the product you guys are creating together. So. If you I mean, didn't have a new Instagram, where... I wouldn't know that you have a new shoe that's totally, a high yeah. top. So there is a sacrifice a that comes with, with both sides of it, you know? Yeah. But no, I think I, I, just not having it for... For a while, helped me just kind of get back to a place that I needed to get 
mentally. And so it allows me to come back to it with almost a different type of outlook on how to use it, which feels good for sure. No, it's, it's, yeah. it's very healthy. Yeah. Man. Um, uh, way ahead of me in that one. <laughs> I, I, I tell everybody everything on there. I'm an idiot. I mean, yeah, you overshare. But that's a part, that's just what I think nowadays that's just, that's like normal, you know, and it's not a, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's just no, no, a no. normal I, thing. Yeah, I know. I think it's just more, no, I say you overshare just because you're, you're opening yourself up to mad criticism. And yeah. I just hey, think it's one of those things where if, you, if you're opening up for the positive reinforcement, you're going to get the negative too. So it oh, can yeah. Be, My one is, yeah. I no, feel no, like. Not pats on the back. I got problems and I'm dealing with face. them and I, if people see me dealing with them and coming back on top after going through it then that means they can do it too. Totally. And I know that sometimes yeah. oversharing, there's a, like you both said, so there's negative there. It's but a fine line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're the, the spokesperson for something, there's going to always be a lot of controversy no matter what. Yeah. So, but I, I, even just having had it for a little bit now already, I've, you know, been able to connect with people that I'm, Right. Hadn't thought about in a long time, and that aspect is cool. To right. like, oh yeah, I haven't talked to so and so in a while, and and I don't think that you know you can have those type of connections naturally without having that, which is yeah. a positive of it. So. Yeah, because you're gonna if you just you know you don't see any of that stuff, you're gonna. I was you're just kind of living in the the bubble that you're in. Yeah. My my family's in Australia, and I see like exactly things that if it wasn't for Instagram. Yep. I wouldn't, you know what I mean? I, I've got nieces yeah. and nephews. And, and totally. if it wasn't for that, like my brother's not a guy that's going to send me a photo of anything. Yeah. But because his wife posts stuff, not him. Yeah. I know that I have nieces yeah, 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 and nephews. Yeah, yeah. So yeah no. That's I think, a good yeah. thing. And not having it for a while has kind of reprogrammed my brain where I forget to share stuff with people right. like in my life. Because uh, I, I just feels, it almost feels weird sending someone something that maybe I've accomplished or done because it, if it's just directly to someone, it feels almost this like, like a, almost like you're bragging or you're or you, you boasting or them, something. You want, but them, when you do it online, it's back. more of just like, that's part of that Here's whole doing, yeah. thing, you know, hmm. but yeah. I have it set on mine where it'll tell you once you've reached a certain amount of time looking at it. And then I just don't look at it anymore. Cause it makes me think about, Makes me think about using the time more wisely. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <We're fucked. laughs> this guy is so far ahead of us. It's insane. I'm like, that's you can it. do that. We have that's, to, it. We, that's it. We have to end it there. Where he just he just blew our minds, yeah. teaching us yeah. about life. <laughs> that fits so you bad. You would be shocked at the number too that yeah that it's I, set to. I don't want to show you the number of how long I look at that stupid thing. Yeah, yeah. but I don't I, even want to know. I did that because I know that I. It'll, you get lost. I'll it pulls fall you back in. into it. Yeah. 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 So it makes you, it makes me at least just use the time more wisely on there. Maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of time on social media, um, I have to go pick up your youngest sister. What time is it? Play rehearsals very soon. So I have to wrap it up. Um, 3.20. And she spends the most time on there. Well, well it's her era. It's her era. That is, yeah. yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Second nature. Yeah, right. Yeah. Riley, thanks for coming. Yeah, in. dude. Yeah, thank thanks you. for doing the show. Yes, yeah, so sorry we had to get delayed for her, for No, I'm for sorry. No, I'm yeah. glad I'm glad we did it now and not that day. Yeah. yeah that would have been foggy. I once. might have had a little less to offer. Yeah. <laughs> or I might have said stuff that nobody could have been more entertaining. Maybe. Yeah, maybe <laughs> or, or for you maybe. We could have yeah. gone sideways quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, Riley. It's just my name with I think two uh underscores. We're trying to get back the just the, the original, yeah. yeah. Someone kind of parked his name. Someone has it, so He's if not, it's just that. It. If you just type in Riley Hawk, you'll find it. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Riley. Thanks, yeah, dude. Thank Very you. proud of you. Thank you. I love you. I thank love you. you. Too. Aw. <laughs> you guys are so gay. It's awesome. <laughs> Actually, you are. Like and describe. Got me. Like and describe is what you said? Yeah. <laughs> we said that once by accident, and then that just stuck. Oh,